वेलकम टू दी गेट 2024 सॉल्यूशंस ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिकल इंजीनियरिंग दोस्तों इलेक्ट्रिकल का पेपर तो हो गया अब आगे क्या सॉल्यूशंस आपको आज बताए जाएंगे एंड यू हैव टू चेक हाउ इज योर परफॉर्मेंस गेट इज ऑल अबाउट एक्यूरेसी दोज ऑफ यू हु हैव नॉट मेड मिस्टेक्स दे विल रिजल्ट इनटू द बेटर रैंक एंड बेटर स्कोर गेट स्कोर इज वेरी यूजफुल बिकॉज वी नो दिस इज वैलिड फॉर द नेक्स्ट थ्री ईयर्स and gate score will be used for the public sectors also in case your gate score is not good your examination is not done well then you have to rethink and you replan for the next attempt so the solutions which will be carried out today will be one by one subject and we all know these are the basis of, on the basis of students memory so dosto आपके पास भी अगर कोई सवाल हैं अगर आप शेयर करना चाहते हैं तो मेडी जी के टेलीग्राम ग्रुप पर भेज सकते हैं सो दैट वी कैन वी नोन टू दी मोर नंबर ऑफ क्वेश्चंस और ज़्यादा क्वेश्चन हम डिस्कस कर पाएंगे वैसे तो अधिकतर क्वेश्चंस मिल गए हैं बट फिर भी आपका सहयोग अच्छा रहेगा कुछ इन्फॉर्मेशन और शेयर करना चाहता हूँ कि अभी नेक्स्ट वीक में इंजीनियरिंग सर्विसेज का प्रिलिम्स होने वाला है एंड फॉर द प्रिलिम्स डर इस पेपर वन जनरल स्टडीज विच इज़ ए वेरी ट्रिकी एरिया क्योंकि बहुत सारे स्टूडेंट्स टेक्निकल पढ़ाई करते हैं और जी एस के पेपर को इग्नोर करते हैं या टाइम नहीं मिलता इसलिए नहीं पढ़ पाते लेकिन कुछ ऐसी ट्रिकी चीज़ें हैं कि अगर आपको पता हो तो आप उसकी परफॉर्मेंस को इम्प्रूव कर सकते हैं तो दोस्तों मैं ट्यूजडे को सेवन थर्टी डे आफ्टर टुमारो सेवन थर्टी आई विल टेक ए सेसन ऑन टिक ट्रिक्स एंड टिप्स फॉर क्रैकिंग प्रिलिम्स 2024 तो आप वो सेशन जरूर करना इसमें कुछ ऐसी ट्रिक्स भी होंगी जो आप दूसरे एग्जाम्स में भी अप्लाई कर सकते हैं सो इट विल नॉट बी लिमिटेड टू दी ओनली इंजीनियरिंग सर्विस प्रिलिम्स बट कैन बी यूज इन दी अदर एग्जाम्स ऑल्सो इन फ्यूचर इन एडिशन टू दैट अब गेट हो गया तो गेट के बाद अब क्या नया करना है नेक्स्ट क्या करना है ये भी आपको सोचना है जो पेपर का जो डिफिकल्टी लेवल है इस बार का इलेक्ट्रिकल का दैट सीम्स कि इट इज मॉडरेट इट इज नॉट वेरी टफ बट इट इज नॉट वेरी इजी आल्सो मॉडरेट पेपर है तो पेपर तो सबके लिए है अगर टफ आएगा तो सबके लिए इजी आएगा तो भी सबके लिए सो डजेंट मैटर मेड इजी इज कमिंग अप विथ सर्टेन न्यू प्लान्स ऑलमोस्ट टू डिकेट्स वी हैव कम्प्लीटेड एंड दोज ऑफ यू हु हैव बीन मेड इजी स्टूडेंट्स यू नो कि हाउ क्वालिटी वाइज मेडी जी कोर्सेस आर टॉट ऑल द टीचर्स आर वेरी गुड दे हैव वेरी इन डेप्थ नॉलेज एंड द टीच थॉरली तो यहाँ पर बहुत अच्छे से पढ़ाया जाता है इन केस यू आर राइटिंग और इंटेंडेड टू राइट इन अपकमिंग ईयर्स गेट और इंजीनियरिंग सर्विस और एनी अदर एग्जाम यू कैन ऑलवेज टेक दी मेडी जी सर्विसेज दो डिकेड के बाद अब इस बार हम लोग कुछ नया करने जा रहे हैं एंड समथिंग अपग्रेडेड वर्जन सो ऑन एटीन ऑफ दिस मंथ वी विल अनाउंस न्यू वर्जन ऑफ मे डी जी दैट विल बी मे डी जी टू पॉइंट ओ वर्जन जिसमें बहुत सारे नए कोर्सेज भी लॉन्च हो रहे हैं कोर्स एफोर्डेबल होंगे ऑनलाइन में भी कुछ नई सर्विसेज स्टार्ट हो रही हैं ऑफलाइन की क्वालिटी और इम्प्रूव हो रही है एंड एफिशेंट भी होगी मतलब इट्स नॉट द ओनली कि एफर्ट्स विल बी हाई बट इफेक्टिवनेस विल बी वेरी हाई नाउ इन कमिंग सेशन तो ये कुछ नए इनिशिएटिव्स हैं और हम कोशिश कर रहे हैं कि जो कॉलेज गोइंग स्टूडेंट्स हैं फर्स्ट ईयर सेकेंड ईयर उनके लिए नए कोर्स लॉन्च कर रहे हैं जिसको हम कहते हैं बेसिक्स ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिकल इंजीनियरिंग सिमिलरली बेसिक्स ऑफ कंप्यूटर साइंस बेसिक्स ऑफ मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग तो हर ब्रांच के बेसिक कोर्सेज भी अवेलेबल होंगे और बहुत ही अफोर्डेबल इस विल बी ऑन मंथली बेसिस ए नॉमिनल अमाउंट कैन बी पेड एंड यू कैन टेक ए सब्सक्रिप्शन ऑफ वन ईयर और फर्स्ट ईयर और सेकेंड ईयर वाले स्टूडेंट्स अपने बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट को इम्प्रूव कर सकते हैं तो बेसिक्स ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग दीज कोर्सेज विल बी लॉन्च और इसका अनाउंसमेंट होगा अट्ठारह तारीख को इस इस सब के अलावा जो आपकी एफिशिएंसी ऑफ लर्निंग होती है वो किन किन बातों पे डिपेंड करती है उनको रिसर्च करके उनको इम्प्रूवमेंट कर रहे हैं सो दीज आर द न्यू अनाउंसमेंट्स विच आई थॉट आई शुड शेयर टू यू कि होने वाले हैं अब क्योंकि नाउ यू मस्ट बी वेटिंग फॉर दी सॉल्यूशंस, सो आई विल इनवाइट वन बाय वन फैकल्टी मेंबर्स एंड दे विल 
टेक दी सब्जेक्ट जो लोग बेडी जी के रहे हैं किसी भी सेंटर में रहे हो उनके लिए मैं कहना चाहूँगा कि आप लोग अगर कोई भी सिलेबस आपका छूट गया था कोई टॉपिक आपका वीक रह गया है और आप मेडी जी स्टूडेंट हैं क्लासरूम में रहे हैं तो आप फिर से वहाँ पर सेशन कर सकते हैं अगर आप कुछ एक दो सेक्शन करना चाहते हैं कोई दो सब्जेक्ट्स हैं तो विदाउट एनी कॉस्ट वी विल गिव यू दी सर्विस पूरा सेक्शन आपको रिपीट करना है पूरा सिलेबस रिपीट करना है तो उसके लिए सब्सिडाइज हाईली सब्सिडाइज कोर्स भी है वी बिलीव दैट कि मेडी जी इज ऑलवेज फॉर स्टूडेंट्स और मैं मेरा यही एम रहता है कि वी विल गिव यू दी बेस्ट नेक्स्ट आई एंड मेडी जी दोनों संस्थाएं हैं जो लोग सिविल सर्विसेज की तैयारी करना चाहते हैं यू शुड नॉट हेजिटेट इन कॉन्टेक्टिंग अस नेक्स्ट आई एस इज देयर और इसी तरह से इस बार नीट और आई आई टी जेई के लिए भी मेडी जी का एक नया इनिशिएटिव स्टार्ट हुआ है जिसको हम मैनेट कहते हैं मेडी जी नीट आई आई टी दैट ऑल्सो विल स्टार्ट दी कोर्स सो विश यू ऑल दी बेस्ट और आपका रिजल्ट अच्छा है ईश्वर आपको बहुत सारी सफलताएं दें जब भी कोई परेशानी हो आप अपना हिम्मत अपनी हौसला अपनी हिम्मत बनाए रखिए और हमसे जो कोई सहयोग चाहिए तो बिल्कुल आप हेजिटेट मत करिए वी आर ऑलवेज विद यू वी आर योर वेल विशर थैंक यू सो मच हाई डियर स्टूडेंट्स आई होप यू हैव डन वेल दिस एग्जाम इलेक्ट्रिकल द क्वेश्चन आर लुकिंग वेरी कंफर्टेबल आई थिंक इन एनलॉग वी गॉट ओनली थ्री क्वेश्चन सिफ्त कर सर यस एंड टूडे माई सेल्फ अडाडा राजकुमार एंड माई कोलीग किफ्त कर सर इज गोइंग टू डील दिस क्वेश्चन एनलॉग आई थिंक थ्री क्वेश्चन वी गॉट अप टू नो आई वी डोंट नो मे बी सम अदर क्वेश्चन ऑल्सो केम बट इन माई लिस्ट वी हैव थ्री क्वेश्चन one is from diode and one is from bjt and one is from op amp the first two question first two questions i'll complete the remaining question will be deal by iftikhar sir okay yes sir, please yeah. carry on please you can see the first question is related to a basic diode circuit analysis when we start analog electronics in the classroom our students knows that first only i'll teach ideal diode testing and practical diode testings i think in this question they have given ideal diode the diodes are ideal he said we have only two test here d2 d1 the current is asking across d1 this is the question id1 he is asking so only thing you have to do is you have two methods one is short circuit test one is open circuit test whatever you like you can do it but i don't want to do all these things after testing i done open circuit test and i checked that d1 d2 both are getting on so directly i'm writing here after testing testing status you must get d1 and d2 both are on for the circuit you should get both are on okay now he is asking the current across d1 so when both are on you can take this as a short circuit so you can make a short ideally we make directly short circuit no voltage drop across the diode if we do like this in this manner what we can do is to find out this current just uh, this three will come here you find out some current here you find out some current here so we can apply some kcl and we can finish this problem correct 
this current easily you can get from this network it is 3 milli amperes this current is over 3 by 1 k will be 3 milli amperes then i have used some nodal analysis to find out this voltage so that vx minus 3 by 1 k will give this current so i don't want to do all this uh, calculations just i'll write the vx how much i got in my calculation i'll write directly you must get around uh, 4.33 volts some vx by using some nodal knowledge this current will be coming around uh, 4.33 minus 3 by 1k it will be around 1.1.33 milliamperes we can expect so just apply at this point some kcl here so that we can find out the id1 it's a simple problem so the kcl you can write it as 1.33 milliamperes plus id1 will be equal to 3 milliamperes these two currents are entering this current is leaving so that finally you can get the id1 answer it is coming through with 3 milliamperes minus 1.33 milliamperes the value will be 1.67 milliamperes like this you can finish this problem so this question maximum students electrical students who have studied the basics of diode they have comfortably have done this question okay so let us move to the next question that is related to some bjt question is there so the next question so this is also very comfortable question okay in this bjt question is talking about simple biasing circuit he has given everybody knows it's a very popular uh, circuit in electronics we say it's a voltage divided biasing circuit okay in this voltage divided biasing circuit please understand the vb voltage he has given points on as usual silicon transistor and is asking vc and ic which is called the operating point values okay and the beta he has given 100 there are two styles you can do this problem if it is a fill in the blank you can go for accurate answer so ib cannot be neglected you can take like that and you can start doing that uh, method if it is an objective type question a b c d if they give some options there is another style we say beta is a large you can take that method and you can solve i will do like that beta is large so that answers will be approximately same nearly same if beta if you see in our concept greater than or equal to 100 if anybody give the beta value like that there is a possibility of taking some approximation saying that ib can be neglected which makes the problem to solve very comfortable if ib is neglected if you take this side neglected we can find out some base voltage directly here very simply vb you can find out by using some divider network we can find out the vb voltage i think i got some value vb around 4 volts is coming base voltage will be 4 volts and he has given some voltage here across base emitter voltage that is 0.7 so that 4 minus 0.7 will give the emitter voltage which will be around 3.3 .3 volts comfortably you can solve the emitter current which is equal to 3.3 .3 milli amperes this is your ie current as we have been approximated ib is nearly equal to zero very simply you can write this as ic becomes ie which is equal to 3.3 .3 milli amperes so that the calculation speed will be better okay this current this current will be same so we got the answer ic is completed so operating current ic is uh, nearly 3.3 .3 milli amperes if you go for exact method one plus beta times ic is equal to uh, beta times of ib if you take ib calculation also the answer will be very close to 3.3 .3 milli amperes uh, not more than this okay because of beta large value and we can find out the vc value next answer is vc we see if you take the KVL at the output, we have VCC minus IC is equal to IE only. So we have series of two resistors you can take 2K plus 1K like this. Apply a KVL like this. Therefore, VCE has given 12 minus 3.3 .3 milliamperes into 3K. So this will be the VC voltage. The VC voltage you can expect nearly 
2.1 volt we are expecting. So, this is the way how easily we can solve this type of questions. This time maybe it is easy, sometimes it will be tough questions also can come. I think maximum students who has attended the coaching in Made Easy, they, these questions are very nothing for them. Okay? There is one more question that is related to op amp, which is a CMRR question. My colleague will deal that, Kirtikar sir will come and he will explain you. Okay? Yeah. Uh, thank you Rajkumar sir. Uh, there was one more question from analog. Uh, it is about uh, calculating common mode rejection ratio. It is a standard question. In this year's electrical gate paper, questions are of standard nature. One question on diode testing, one question on BJT biasing and one question based on op amp and we have to find here common mode rejection ratio. This circuit is like a uh, difference amplifier, but uh, if you observe this ratio of the resistors is not equal. Okay? I mean uh, this resistor divided by this, that ratio does not match with uh, this resistor divided by this. So, this is like a difference amplifier where uh, there is some imbalance okay? and in this kind of circuit we do calculation of common mode rejection ratio. So, what we do first of all is we calculate V naught, we can write V naught using superposition concept. Okay? If I write V naught here it will be in this way, V naught is equal to uh, if you consider this input non-inverting input uh, V into it will divide between uh, these two resistors and that voltage will get multiplied by a factor uh, 1 plus R2 by R1. So, if I consider V into I will get V naught uh, 1 plus that uh, R2 by R1 1 naught 1 1 plus 101 divided by 10.5 into V plus. V plus is nothing but voltage at this non-inverting terminal okay? and that we can calculate through voltage divider V into into 101.5 divided by 9.5 plus 101.5. Let me write it here V into into uh, 101.5 divided by 101.5 plus uh, 9.5. So, this must this much output we get because of uh, this non-inverting input. Then we also write here output because of inverting input. Now, that will be uh, minus R2 by R1 into V in 1. Okay? So, it will become like this. minus uh, 101 divided by 10.5 into V in 1. Okay? This we can simplify, we get V naught uh, in this way. If you calculate these values, it will be 9.71 into V in 2 minus uh, this will be 9.619 into V in 1. Now, this expression, uh, from this expression you can take this as gain A 1, this is actually gain provided to the non-inverting input, V in 2 is getting amplified by a factor uh, 9.71, whereas V in 1, if you notice, it is getting amplified by a factor minus 9.619. Okay? A 1 is 9.71. Here A 1 means the factor by which non-inverting input getting amplified and A 2 is a factor by which inverting input is getting amplified. Now, once we know A 1, A 2, uh, we can calculate difference mode gain and common mode gain. We know formula for ADM, ACM. It is a standard op amp circuit. So, I am directly using formula. ADM ko hum is tarah se find karenge. Uh, A1 minus A2 divided by 2. Okay? A1 minus A2 divided by 2. Ab aap isko calculate kariye. It will be 9.6645. Then we can calculate common mode gain. Common mode gain ke liye hum formula use karte hain. A1 plus A2. A1 plus A2 and that you will get uh, 0 0.091, it is 0 
zero nine one. Then we can calculate CMRR. CMRR is a ratio of ADM and ACM, difference mode gain divided by common mode gain. You can take this ratio, it will be 106.2. But in the question, uh, they have asked CMRR in decibel. We have common mode rejection ratio calculate karna hai in dB decibel. So, we will CMRR ko denge in dB. CMRR in decibel. It will be 20 into log, it is log to the base 10, okay, log of 106.2. Agar aap isko calculate karenge, uh, it will be 40.52 dB. You will get CMRR equal to 40.52 decibel. So, this was one standard question which came in this year's electrical gate paper. Uh, I hope most of you or everyone might have got this answer correctly. So, Rajkumar sir, some comments from yeah. your side. I think um, uh, some students have been called me and they said that uh, the questions are very comfortable, but uh, some other subjects also there, maybe some difficult questions also may be expected in other subjects. But analog, I think very comfortable questions, what we have been explained in the class, we got a very simple questions. You have been enjoyed that questions I am feeling. And uh, for ESC exam, now you plan for ESC exam for uh, studying for that, you concentrate on that and be happy always. Yeah. Okay. Thank Best you. wishes from my Best. side also. Thank yeah. you. Thank Yeah, welcome to the digital electronics session. Dear students, uh, you experienced the questions also, no? These are very easy questions which we used to discuss in the classes uh, with tricks also. One question is there here, which is uh, related to the K map. Let me see this one here. Some expression is given like that and they ask the simplification of that. So, the function is PQRS, so that I am just going to make the K map like this, P bar Q bar, P bar Q, P Q, P Q bar. P bar Q bar, P bar Q, P Q, P Q bar. Like this here, R bar S bar, R bar S, R S, R S bar because the function is given PQRS, no, because of that. Here the numbers are, you know, like this. Here we should identify the expression. First, let me say this one, P bar Q bar. So, here P bar Q bar, no, so let me say this here. P bar Q bar. So, P bar Q bar means this entire thing. Next, P bar Q S. So, P bar Q here, S means here and here. Next, P Q bar R P Q bar. So, P Q bar is here, R bar S bar is here. And next one, P Q bar, P Q bar is here, R S bar. So, that is here. So, you can make this one. This is a quad corners and this is another quad. So, 
this this corner quad if you make it what you will get is from this p bar q bar and he this one you will get the q bar because in this and in this unchanged lateral is q bar and from this column and from this column unchanged lateral is s bar. So, this is the thing and for this particular quad. So, in this one unchanged lateral is p bar here and this side is p bar s you check this one this is the way you are having. So, whenever the expression is given based on that doing the thing is the easy way the technique we are already having the discussed in the classrooms. So, based on that we made it check this one p bar q bar means here I kept once here and p bar q s yes. p bar q here s yes means here and here and next p q bar r bar s bar p q bar r bar s bar is here and p q bar r s bar is here. So, this is one particular quad for that p bar and this is s and for this corners one this is the way we should make in this and in this q bar is unchanged literal and in this column and in this column unchanged literal is s bar. So, like that got it. Now, let me come to the another question. So, this is a circuit with a combination circuit is given here and a d flip flop is given here and they ask the next one what it will be the thing. So, when here d flip flop is given it will be very easy for us to solve because whatever the thing here comes that only will be next z plus we are going to get it. Here initially they said it should be 1. So, that here we should keep 1 here and that 1 only comes here no right. So, one particular thing 1 is there here. Now, how to solve this one because here they said this is the expression like that. So, x is 0 y equal to 1 like that they gave. So, first of all you apply the shortcut like this I explained in the class to you x excludes you x excludes you x excludes you x excludes you. So, here x x bar 1 0 this is only I used to say in the class this is only you should make in this way that is x x bar 1 0. So, based on this you should make the solution of this one here x excludes you y. So, first of all you make that one as otherwise this particular thing x excludes you y as a and x r 1 a x r 1 a x r 1 is nothing but x bar. So, that here we are going to get it is nothing but a x nor I mean a means here that is nothing but what we can say here is this is x exclusive y no that particular thing is going to become as bar because that we are considered as a here. So, based on that here x equal to 0 y equal to 1. So, you apply that one x equal to 0 y equal to 1 this is nothing but x naught expression only. So, for this one 0 x naught 1. So, 0 x naught 1 you apply that and you get, will get the solution for this. These things getting is easy only, but how to apply these things is for example, sometimes they would not give these also if they give this is the expression directly then how to do it is you take this one as some expression as a a x r z a x r z means z is already they gave as 1. So, that x exclusive 1 means x bar that means that is going to be a bar a bar means x r y bar that is x naught. So, based on that you can solve this one got it right I think you answered the questions of the digital so well and you did well right thank you bye. Hello dear students. So, here I am going to give the solutions of engineering mathematics questions for electrical engineering right. Last year this paper was very tough 
uh, from mathematics side, but this time very easy, very comfortably, quite drastic. Oppositely, the question has been given. Now, uh, let us see the solutions of these questions. The first question is the square of this matrix here. If you find out this matrix here, right, so it is of 1, 2, 3, 4, the square of this matrix. So, if you do this, if you do this here, 1 plus here uh, 6, it is 7, okay. And then here I do the second row with second column. So, now I do this 6, 6 plus here 16, that is 22 here. Because I need only those numbers because he is asking the sum of the eigenvalues. But we know that the sum of eigenvalues is what? Lambda 1 plus lambda 2 is given by trace of A or not? Trace of A. So, what is trace of A here? So, this is our A, it is 29, right or not? The answer is 29. So, very easy question beta, right? Very easy question. Let us move on to the next question. Here, Got this is very, three. very clearly seen that directly you can give the answer if you have the simple knowledge of the polynomial expansions. So, this is e to the power of z square. It is an even series and is cause, I mean, it is, it, it is a series of having the even powers and the cos z is also having even powers of z. So, therefore, both everything will be in terms of the even powers of z. But here it is, he is asking the quotient of z power of i, which does not exist at all. So, the answer is 0, direct, okay. Now, the next question is that it is a very direct question. It is again clear that is here del f dot a bar by modulus of a bar, modulus of a bar here. So, this is the vector is given. See, he is asking the directional derivative of this scalar point function f in the direction of this vector at a point p. So, you know that we want to find out the derivative of the surface in some direction. So, that gives by projection. So, that is del f dot. So, this is a vector beta dot a bar by modulus of a bar. So, you find out this del f bar na. See, everybody knows that it is del f is given by what? It is a vector f x, f y, f z here. Now, you do the partial derivative of this. So, you will be getting here. So, f x will be, you will be getting here 5, 5 by x, you will get and 3 by y and you will be getting the other one is 4 by z, 4 by z here, partial derivative here, just a partial derivative, nothing else. So, now at which point you have to find at the point 1 comma 1 comma 1 here. So, this will be of 5, 3, 4 here. So, this is the del f bar. So, let me take this vector here 5i plus 3j plus 4k here and then dot product with a bar. What is a bar is? 2i plus j plus 2k here, right or not, dot divided by under root of this 9, right. So, absolutely if you do the dot product, it is 10 plus 3, 13 plus 8, it is 21 by 3. So, the answer will be 7, very easy calculation, very easy function. So, directly you are getting the answer, okay, need not to put any much effort. See, you can give the answer even one less than two minutes. Right, coming to this question, it is a very funda question that it is the function is given very clearly from minus infinity to infinity, just draw the graph and see the differentiability and not differentiability, it is very easy question, those who have solved the workbook question, question number 4, so directly the same type of question has been given here, only the function was different, that is it, but the function is also very basic function, so let me write this function here, that is Directly, I will show you the graph, right? The function is from minus infinity to infinity, right? If you draw the graph of the function f of x is equal to, so for x less than 0, so for negative values, here the maximum will be 0 or not. So, therefore, the function will be 0, right or not? So, here it is 0 from minus infinity to 0, right? And then for 0 to infinity, so x value will be this, but the function is a square of it. So, the maximum of 0 comma x will be x and maximum of 0 comma x whole square will be x square. So, therefore, here the graph will be like this. So, it is very clear beta. So, it is going very smooth. The graph is going very smooth. Therefore, it is a differentiable function. It is a differentiable function. 
right so f of x is differentiable here but now he is also asking for f dash of x so therefore let us draw the f dash of x graph also right at 0 minus infinity infinity and we take the graph of f dash of x and here the graph is this this is the function here for 0 the differentiation is 0 so therefore again the graph existed here it is but uh, but uh, so at 0 to x square na? 0 to infinity the function is x square x square ka differentiation kya hoga? 2x hoga. So 2x means it is a straight line. Now here it if you observe carefully, see this point at 0, the graph is getting exactly sharp. So so graphing exactly get sharp. So yaha par ek sharp edge hai. hai? To wahan par function differentiable nahi hai. Matlab f dash of x exist, but here it is not differentiable here. Okay. So this is the graph here, f dash of x exist, f dash of x exist because it is continuity, but it is not differentiable. So that means here f double dash of x, okay, does not exist, okay, right, or f dash of x is not differentiable, you can say that. So let us see the options here f of x is differentiable but f dash x is not continuous no it is continuous right ye galat hai right then go to the f of x is not differentiable but f dash of x is not differentiable bola hai ye to differentiable hai smooth to ye bhi galat hai so f of x and f dash of x both differentiable ye to nahi both are not so see f dash of x is not differentiable right to ye bhi galat hai aur f of x is differentiable hai and f dash of x is continuous yes absolutely so answer d answer d here it's a very basic question so next the remaining questions will be taken by my colleague mr punit sharma thank you sir thank you so much better next question is based on i think complex analysis this is the question of complex analysis and they are asking the analyticity of a function analyticity in me se kaun sa analytic hai let us uh, cross check one by one taking options beta in option number a if we write fz equals to u plus iota v then z square will be x square minus y square plus iota times 2xy and what about z z is nothing but x plus iota y x plus iota y if we compare <coughs> u and v from this one real and imaginary part then real part will be x square minus y square minus x and the imaginary part equals to 2xy minus y this is the imaginary part Achha, simply cross check by cr equations so better cr equations theke cr equations are ux equals to vy and uy equals to minus vx what about ux ux is the partial derivative of u with respect to x and its partial derivative will be equals to 2x minus 1 similarly vy is also the partial derivative of v with respect to y so it should be 2x minus 1 beta ye to satisfy ho gaya second cr equation uy partial derivative of u with respect to y it is minus 2y or minus vx is also 2y beta ye bhi satisfy ho gaya it means cr equations are satisfied for all the values of x and y it means option a is analytic in the entire complex plane and jo bola gaya tha option a is right similarly beta aap aise hi cross check kar sakte ho ki baaki ke teen options mein cr equations are not satisfying it means the only correct option is option number a theek hai now moving on to the next one sahi hai na sir itne theek moving on to the next one ha this is the question of probability uniform distribution but in case of discrete form beta ye number hai total numbers are 1 to 10 there are 10 numbers 1 to 10 there are 10 numbers or 1 to 10 again there are 10 numbers but 0 is also there it means total we have 21 numbers probability of choosing any random number is 1 upon 21 because we have total 21 numbers ab ye keh rahe x cube x square in me se kaun sa uniformly distributed hai one by one check karte hai x square aur x cube ko pehle dekh lete hai to x square yahan se dekhe to aayega 100 fir 81 fir 64 and so on fir beta yahan pe aayega minus 1 ka square 1 fir 0 fir 1 ka square 1 4 and so on or 100 tak yahi se dekh kar ke pata chal raha it is not uniformly distributed because the probability of choosing 0 is 1 upon 21 but the probability of choosing 1 is 2 upon 21 because the frequency of 1 is 2 so it is 2 upon 21 so ye uniformly distribution nahi hai because probabilities are not uniform in this set similarly for x cube it is minus 1000 minus 729 minus 
फाइव ट्वेंटी फोर एन सो वन यहाँ पर आएगा माइनस वन जीरो वन एन सो वन वन थाउजेंड ये वाला आपका यूनिफॉर्मली डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड हो जाएगा रीजन प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ चूजिंग एनी नंबर इज अगेन वन अपॉइंट ट्वेंटी वन यूनिफॉर्म है तो ये यूनिफॉर्मली डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड है अब ऐसे ही आपको x प्लस टेन और x माइनस फाइव चेक करना है बेटा हम x प्लस टेन वाला चेक करके दिखा देते हैं x प्लस टेन का होल स्क्वायर अगर x प्लस टेन करेंगे तो माइनस टेन से जीरो से हो जाएगा वन से हो जाएगा ऐसे करते करते ट्वेंटी तक आएगा अगेन द प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ चूजिंग एनी नंबर इज वन अपॉइंट ट्वेंटी वन इट इज ऑल्सो यूनिफॉर्मली डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड ऑप्शन सी इज ऑल्सो करेक्ट बेटा सिमिलरली आप चेक करना ऑप्शन डी इज रॉन्ग तो इट मीन द आंसर ऑफ दिस क्वेश्चन इज ऑप्शन एन ऑप्शन सी एम एस क्यू बेस्ट था अभी तक यही क्वेश्चन मिले हैं अब एन अदर फैकल्टी विल कम एंड डिस्कस थैंक यू so let's start the discussion with respect to the question from power electronic subject so let's discuss the first question in this first question a single phase time based ac voltage controller aap logo ko mann mein aa raha hoga ye to syllabus mein nahi hai but question bahut easy tha chaliye question ko to solve karte hain jo pucha gaya hai feeds rl load the input ac supply they have given Frequency is 50 hertz. The information that is 50 hertz is going to be important in the solution. The value of R and L of the load they have given means R is nothing but what 10 ohm, and your L is nothing but what 18.37. Uh, 18.37 milli henry. Okay. The minimum triggering angle to obtain the controlled output voltage, and we all know very well with respect to RL load. The alpha value should be greater than the theta in order to get the controlled output voltage we have discussed during the class as well. So now we need to find out theta. What will be your theta? Theta will be equal to what? 10 inverse omega L by R. Omega L by R. Omega means 2 pi F L by R. We will put all the values. Then theta will be approximately equal to what? 30 degree means for controlled output voltage your alpha must be greater than 30 degree and with respect to the examiner's choice like alpha minimum they want so obviously we are going to mark with respect to 30 degree and we will proceed further this is the answer of the question chali ab agla question dekhte hain agla question hai if the following switching device have similar power ratings then which of the following is the fastest device? Dosto, we all know the ratings with respect to the devices. And obviously, here power MOSFET is going to be the best suitable for our fastest switching application. Simply, the answer of this particular question is A, that is power MOSFET. Next question of power electronics is going to be deal by the respected Jagdish sir. So sir, please continue. Yeah. Hello, my dear students. So, just go through this question. So, here it is a step down chopper and we have given a commutation circuit and in this we are asked uh, the capacitor polarities are given by like this and initially main thyristor is already in the on state 
and after I switch on the auxiliary thyristor, so what is the time taken to turn off the main thyristor? That means it is nothing but circuit turn off time. We have to find out the circuit turn off time of main thyristor. So here let me explain how to find out the circuit turn off time of main thyristor in this case. Just understand the concept here. To understand this, we are drawing the waveform for voltage across the capacitance. Actually, it is an objective type questions, no need to draw waveform. Just for giving clarity, I am drawing the waveform here. At t is equal to 0 seconds, I want to switch on the auxiliary thyristor to switch off the main thyristor. So, at the beginning, capacitor voltage is minus V s volts. So, here V s is equal to 50 volts. Okay? This V s is equal to 50 volts. Capacity is initially charged with minus 50 volts. So, when I switch on the auxiliary thyristor, current passes through the auxiliary thyristor and capacitance and then load like this. Okay. So, in this case, if we observe, this capacitor is directly applying negative voltage across the main SCR. So, initial voltage is minus 50 volts. When current in the auxiliary is constant, that means current in the capacitor is constant. So, capacitor voltage is linearly charging from minus 50 to up to 50 volts. 50 volts is the supply voltage. So, how much time negative voltage is applied across the SCR? So, that duration is called circuit turn off time that is TCM. This is the circuit turn off time of main thyristor. So, here the circuit turn off time of main thyristor is C by I naught into V s volts. So, the value of capacitance is given by 10 microfarads, 10 into 10 power minus 6, I naught is 10 amperes and supply voltage is 50 volts. So, you are getting 50 microseconds. So, in terms of milliseconds, you will get 0 0.05 milliseconds. So, this is the circuit turn off time of main thyristor. Okay? Very easy question. The next question. second question yeah one, one more question is there right down yeah yeah dear students one more question is there i'll explain the question according to the data that is available for us so it is a boost converter i'm writing the question directly given it is a boost converter Okay, go through this circuit diagram. So, I will give the uh, parameters which are given in the question. Supply voltage V s is equal to 20 volts. Output voltage V naught is 40 volts and it is given that it is continuous conduction, continuous conduction. That means inductive current is continuous. Here the value of uh, inductance is given, the value of inductance is given. Inductance is 2 milli Henry. So, L is equal to L is equal to 2 milli Henry and the device is switched at a frequency of 500 hertz. So, this is the available data. Okay. So, according to this data, we have to find out the peak value of current passing through the inductor. So, how to find out the peak value of current passing through the inductor? So, if it is continuous conduction, the peak value of current passing through the inductor current that is maximum current passing through the inductor that is nothing but I L average plus 
delta L by 2. So, this formula is applicable only when it is continuous. So, when it is continuous, in the case of boost converter, I L average is equal to I naught by 1 minus alpha and delta L by 2. So, how to find out the other parameters? So, here So, for continuous conduction formula for average voltage is V s by 1 minus alpha, output is 40 volts, supply voltage is 20 volts. So, here the duty ratio is 1 by 2 that is 0 0.5 and then average output current is average output voltage by load resistance and this is 40 by and given the load resistance, the value of load resistance is 10 ohms. This is also given in the data dear students, load resistance is 10 ohms, this is also given data. So, output current is 4 amperes. Okay. So, now find out the ripple in the inductive current. For boost converter, the ripple in the inductive current is alpha into V s by frequency into inductance. So, calculate this value alpha is 0 0.5, supply voltage is 20 volts and frequency is 500 hertz, 500 hertz the value of inductance is 2 milli, 2 milli. So, if you calculate this ripple you will be getting 10 amperes here, you will be getting 10 amperes. Okay? So, 10 amperes. So, substitute these parameters in this equation I naught is equal to 4 amperes by 1 minus 0 0.5 plus 10 by 2. Okay. So, that comes to be 5 plus 8, you will be getting 13 amperes. Okay. So, this is the peak value of current passing through the inductor only when it is continuous conduction. So, answer to this question is 13 amperes. So, dear students, if you go through the questions asked in power electronics, all questions are already discussed in our regular course in our workbook questions. You can go through the, our regular course workbook, almost all questions are same, only numericals are changed here. Right students? Thank you. Dear students, greetings of the day. We start electrical machines, induction machines question. I am reading the question first. A three phase 50 hertz 6 pole induction motor runs at 960 rpm. Neglected stator copper and stator core losses, then percentage efficiency is. This is a question from power stage.
data input data output rotor input rotor output and finally shaft output stator loss rotor loss mechanical loss in general, if there is some input across induction motor, after supplying stator losses, there will be stator output. Stator output is exactly equal to rotor input, which is also called as air gap power. From rotor input, slip times rotor input will be lost as rotor copper loss. And the remaining 1 minus s times rotor input is rotor output. Out of rotor output, there will be a mechanical loss, friction and windage loss. After supplying friction and windage loss, the remaining is shaft output. So generally, efficiency is this ultimate output, shaft output by this motor input, power input of the motor. This is general. But as per the context of question, nothing is mentioned. What is given to you is the speed of the motor. It is mentioned 960 rpm. And based on this data, you know synchronous speed. NS is 120 F by P, that is 1000 RPM. Operating speed is 960. So, slip is NS minus N by NS, that is 1000 minus 960 by 1000, that is 0. 0, 0.04. This is operating slip. Neglecting stator loss because data is not given. Stator output is nothing but stator input, which is nothing but rotor input or air gap power. In this, slip times the rotor input will be lost as rotor copper loss. Remaining is rotor output, which means the rotor output is 1 minus s times rotor input. From this what we get relationship is rotor output by rotor input is equal to 1 minus s. Rotor output by rotor input, not motor output by motor input. It is actually rotor efficiency because in the data it is mentioned neglect the losses. By ignoring the losses as per the context of the question we can simply say approximate efficiency is 1 minus s. Rotor output by rotor input is equal to 1 minus s. So that is 1 minus 0 0.04 that is 0 0.96. In percentage wise it is into 100. So approximate efficiency is 96 percent. So in the class we discuss if nothing is mentioned in the question overall in general if you want to express the efficiency you can say 1 minus s or n by n s. Another question from induction, I am reading it first. A three phase star connected slip ring induction motor has the following parameters referred to stator. As you know, equivalent circuit question this is, this is the standard equivalent circuit R1, X1, R2 dash, R1, X1, X2 dash, R2 dash by X, J, Xm. In the class we see this circuit, will replace with a Thevenin equivalent. In this question it is made simple, Xm is not given to you. When XM is not given to you, circuit becomes so simple and the solution also becomes simple. Like according to the question data, this is R1, 
this is x1 x2 dash simply b now you know according to the question what is asked is starting maximum torque during starting this is the context of the question means you know if you want maximum torque imagine this is i torque is maximum if air gap power is maximum because as per the torque formula torque is directly proportional to air gap power torque is directly proportional to air gap power which is nothing but i square into r2 dash by s this is air gap power right now applying maximum power transfer theorem for this circuit the power dissipated in this resistor will be maximum if all the source resistance is equal to this resistance like impedance is equal to this resistance right on that basis we can write r2 dash by s is equal to root r1 square plus x1 plus x2 dash square I am taking magnitude directly. So, what is R1 value? 3 ohms, 3 square plus x1 plus x2 dash, 2 plus 2, 4 square, 9 plus 16, root 25, 5. You already know in the induction motor theory, maximum starting torque occurs when the rotor resistance is exactly equal to the reactance resistance can never be equal to the reactance generally reactance dominates but how to make it equal we discuss if you add some extra resistance into the rotor some r external so that that extra resistance plus existing resistance of the rotor equals to the reactance then obviously the motor start with its maximum torque nothing but called as maximum starting torque so this is condition for maximum torque if you calculate S, that S is SMT, slip at which maximum torque occurs. According to this question, we do not want SMT, we want to make SMT is equal to 1 because it is asked, you have to calculate maximum starting torque. So, maximum torque during starting means S should be equal to 1. If you keep, this is condition for maximum torque, you can convert condition for maximum torque into condition for maximum starting torque by keeping s equal to 1. If you substitute s equal to 1, this automatically becomes condition for maximum starting torque. Now, r2 dash cannot be equal to simplify. What is r2 dash value? 2.5. r2 dash cannot be simply equal to this 5. What is the concept now? r2 dash plus r external dash because we are working on stator side when you are working with an equivalent circuit you know rotor parameters are shifted to stator side that is why this prime symbol so first i want to deal on the stator side then i will convert to rotor side so r external dash is equal to 5 ohms that is the logic this is condition for maximum torque this is condition for maximum starting torque by putting s equal to 1 you, it cannot be equal to 5 so you have to add some extra resistance so from this R external dash is 5 minus 2.5, that is 2.5. So, in this question, it is very clearly given stator to rotor effective turns ratio. This is given in the question. See, in the class, I used to say first question, question number 13, I think. In that question, you will see like similar thing 1.2 ratio. I told you they will be giving in the if you are given in the exam you have to make it finally to rotor side because it is asked refer to rotor side they will ask you so you this is refer to stator side you have to finally make it into rotor side so r external dash is 2.5 ohms refer to rotor side by using turns ratio is 2.5 by k square 
you are shifting it to stator side. So, rotor side by k square, what is k? 3, 3 square. So, the answer will be point two seven seven ohms. So, these are the two questions from induction and now my colleague will take over. Uh, so, I am dealing here with uh, DC and synchronous part. So, DC mein jo questions aaye the, basically, ye bahut aapne kafi kai baar solve bhi kiye hiye honge, bada asaan sa question hai, right? Jisme ki aap uh, machine ki rating diya hua hai, 5 kilowatt and 220 volt. Armature resistance including burst drop is also given. So, pooch kya raha hai mainly, ye chal dekhte hai. Find the current drawn for best possible efficiency, kuch aisa hi type hai na? Yeah, maximum possible efficiency, basically ye hota hai term. So, maximum efficiency ke liye what we do, uh, the, the variable loss is equal to constant loss, right? Ye data mere paas hai, question aapne dekh liya hooga. Chaliye, to dekhte hai, your, uh, suppose variable loss, I am writing here, variable loss is equal to constant loss. But the point is, variable loss ke liye, they are asking what is the current, kyunki variable loss se hi current aayega. So, I square into how much is there? 0 0.5 is equal to constant loss. So, constant loss kaise calculate karenge? So, constant loss always no load data jo diya rehta hai. Hamesa kehta hume na? Jo no load data diya hua hai, that is there for to calculate that constant loss. Simple. So, no load data pe kya diya hua hai? That is drawing 3 ampere, correct? So, what is the total input? 220 into 3 and minus jo armature mein copper loss ho raha hai, that is the variable loss? Yes. So, total no load pe whatever is the condition, whatever current it is drawing, what is, whatever power it is drawing, isme se agar armature ka copper loss hum minus kar denge, that is the variable loss. So, only constant loss will be there. So, chaliye ji, kitna ho jayega armature ka copper loss? Overall 3 ampere no load pe wo draw kar raha hai, that is given, right? 1 ampere is in shunt, to kitna ho jayega? 2 ampere is remaining, 2 square into how much it is? 0 0.5. To kitna ho jayega? How much it is? 658 watt. Okay. So, this is your, this is your constant loss. Ye samajh maa gaya hoge? Haan sir, bahut hi simple hai. Ab, इसको हमें इक्वेट करना है वेरिएबल लॉस से यस yes, सर तो यहां से करंट की वैल्यू हाउ मच करंट इज इक्वल टू आर्मेचर करंट इज इक्वल टू 36.27 एंपियर नाउ सी दिस इज द आर्मेचर करंट बट इन द क्वेश्चन इट इज आस्किंग आस्किंग हाउ मच करंट इट इज ड्राइंग तो 1 एंपियर शंट में भी जा रहा है हां जी तो करंट ड्रॉन जो होगा दैट इज 36.27 प्लस शंट का 1 एंपियर राइट right. So, कितना हो गया? That is 37.27 ampere. Answer. ठीक है? Simple. So, this is there. अब next question में आ जाइए. That is uh, again the synchronous. जो GTQ भी हमने किया था. In fact, जो uh, marathon class था, उसमें इस तरह के questions आपने किए थे. And not only that, uh, ये general question है. कई बार test series में कहीं ना कहीं आपको ये मिलता है. Right? That is related to Synchronous machine, कुछ reactances given है, यहाँ का voltage मान लीजिए Vt है, and that reactances are given, इधर कुछ inductive load है, correct? ये बोल रहा है कि यहाँ पे कुछ inductive load है, इधर power factor is given, मान लीजिए this is your reference voltage, how much it is, the rating what, what I got from you people, uh, जो हमारा power rating है इसका, that power rating, and, and, and this is 10 MVA and 11 kb kuch aisa hi rating hai right to ye jo v reference hai isko hum log agar 11000 by root 3 angle 0 likh lete hain and here power factor is given that is point root 3 by 2 or point 0.86 lagging so these two data is given correct in fact the same very similar question is there in your marathon class also 
तो अब यहाँ पे दिस इज ऑल्सो गिवन आई थिंक जे फाइव वट एवर आई गॉट दिस इज जे फाइव चलिए तो यहाँ पे पूछ रहा है कि वट इज द पावर फैक्टर एट दिस पॉइंट और और भी डेटा दिए हुए हैं बट दिस इज द मेन क्वेश्चन तो सी टेन एम बी एलेवन के बी है वट इज द करेंट वट इज द करेंट फुल लोड करेंट वट यू कैन से दैट इज टेन इन टू टेन टू दावर सिक्स डिवाइडेड बाई रूट थ्री इन टू इलेवन इन टू टेन टू दावर थ्री राइट कितना आ रहा है हाउ मच इट इज फाइव ट्वेंटी फोर पॉइंट एट सिक्स एम्पियर राइट तो यू नो हाउ मच करेंट इज फ्लोइंग हियर राइट एंगल भी पता है वोल्टेज भी पता है रेफरेंस तो इसमें अगर ये ड्रॉप एड करेंगे तो दिस वोल्टेज वी आर एबल टू गेट तो वट इज वी टी योर वी टी इज नथिंग बट एलेवन थाउजेंड बाय रूट थ्री एंगल जीरो प्लस योर आई ए आई ए इज हाउ मच फाइव ट्वेंटी फोर पॉइंट एट सिक्स एंगल माइनस ऑफ कॉस इनवर्स पॉइंट एट सिक्स थर्टी डिग्री आता है डायरेक्ट ठीक है इन टू जे फाइव सिंपल तो जब इसको हम सॉल्व करते हैं हाउ मच वी आर गेटिंग दैट इज सेवन नाइन नाइन टू पॉइंट नाइन टू एंगल सिक्सटीन पॉइंट फाइव वन डिग्री तो देखिए पॉइंट ये है कि अगर मैं इसको थोड़ा सा फेजर ड्रॉ करके आपको समझाता हूँ देखना ये मान लीजिए रिफरेंस वोल्टेज है हाँ जी सर और दिस इज योर करेंट कितना एंगल पे इधर पॉइंट एट सिक्स यानी कि थर्टी डिग्री पे दिस इज योर करेंट नाउ दिस वोल्टेज दैट टर्मिनल वोल्टेज इज सिक्सटीन पॉइंट कितना फाइव ना फाइव वन सो सिक्सटीन पॉइंट फाइव वन प्लस साइन के साथ आया है मीन्स दैट वोल्टेज विल बी हियर ऑनली दैट वोल्टेज विल बी हियर ऑनली राइट सिंपल यस तो कितना एंगल हो गया ये सिक्सटीन पॉइंट मान लीजिए फाइव वन डिग्री तो वॉट इज पावर फैक्टर मीन्स वॉट इज एंगल बिटवीन दीज दी द टोटल एंगल बिटवीन वी टी एंड आई ए सो दिस एंगल इज सिक्सटीन पॉइंट फाइव वन एंड थर्टी डिग्री सो वॉट इज पावर फैक्टर दैट पावर फैक्टर इज कॉस ऑफ थर्टी प्लस सिक्सटीन पॉइंट फाइव वन डिग्री बस यही हमारा आंसर हो जाएगा और ऑप्शन को भी कुछ इस तरह से दिए हुए थे दैट इज पॉइंट एट सिक्स लीड पॉइंट ये ये आ रहा है आपका आंसर पॉइंट सिक्स एट लैग ठीक है पॉइंट सिक्स एट लैग लैग क्यों यू कैन सी फ्रॉम हियर ऑल्सो दिस करेंट इज लैगिंग फ्रॉम दिस वोल्टेज तो वो तो हो गया सो so, ऑप्शन भी ऐसे दिए हुए थे राइट पॉइंट सिक्स एट लीड फिर पॉइंट एट सिक्स लैग एंड पॉइंट सिक्स एट लैग सो एक वैसे भी आप बताइए मुझे अगर मान लीजिए सपोज यू आर नॉट विलिंग टू सॉल्व इट छोड़िए लीड तो कभी होगा नहीं ना वैसे भी इधर भी लैगिंग पावर फैक्टर है रिएक्टेंस है तो ऑफ कोर्स यहां भी लैगिंग ही होगा तो ये तो वैसे भी नहीं होगा अब बताइए मुझे यहां पे पॉइंट एट सिक्स लैग ऑलरेडी है एंड वन मोर इंडक्टर इज देयर राइट तो सिंपल सी बात है पॉइंट एट सिक्स सेम तो नहीं हो सकता ना तो एक ही बचाइए वैसे भी आंसर हो जाएगा सॉल्व करने की जरूरत भी नहीं थी ठीक है ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच ऑल द बेस्ट फॉर योर रिजल्ट Hello everyone. So let us solve questions of signaling system. So myself, Rohit Tripathi, and Navin sir, we both of us are going to solve questions of signal. So, so this is question number one. Isme x of t given hai and it is equal to e ki power t square, e ki power t square u of t minus one minus u of t minus ten. Or hume karna kya hai? Dosto hume find out karna hai what is the ROC of signal. Now. Because of u of t minus one minus u of t minus ten, this signal is a finite duration signal, and for finite duration signal, ROC will be entire as plane. So for finite duration signal, ROC will be entire as plane, and ये जो signal है finite duration भी है, 
और इस फाइनाइट ड्यूरेशन में फाइनाइट टेम्पलीट्यूड का भी है सो इट इज फिक्स दैट इट्स आर सी विल बी एंटायर एज प्लेन सो द रेंज ऑफ सिग्मा विल बी माइनस इन्फानाइट टू इन्फानाइट ओके तो इस क्वेश्चन में फोर ऑप्शन गिवेन थे जिसमें एक ऑप्शन ये भी था जिसमें सिग्मा का रेंज माइनस इन्फानाइट से इन्फानाइट तक है तो जिस ऑप्शन में ये गिवन है वही ऑप्शन आंसर है अब इसके बाद जो टू थ्री क्वेश्चन हैं वो नवीन सर एक्सप्लेन करेंगे उसके बाद मैं वापस से आऊँगा थैंक यू रोहित सर t signal then y of t is equal to x of minus t then the convolution of x of t convert with y of t will be asking about even odd causal or anti causal okay so if you take the relation uh, such that writing the y of t okay so writing y of t is equal to x of minus t is given <coughs> so we can write like this x of t convolved with y of t is equal to z of t replace t with minus t replace t with minus t then we can find out that z of minus t is equal to x of minus t convolved with y of minus t and obviously when you write y of minus t here your y of minus t is equal to x of t so replacing that that is equal to x of minus t convolved with y of minus t is equal to x of t that means here also we can replace that that is x of t convolved with x of minus t so satisfying both are same according to the commutative property then your z of minus t is equal to z of t z of minus t is equal to z of t which is nothing but an even <coughs> so this signal is comes under the even so we can take this as the option as a even option so next question so coming to the x of omega is the fourier transform which is given so x of omega is fourier transform of e to the power of minus 2 to the power of 4 cos t uh, then dx of omega by d omega to omega is equal to 0 he was asking so when we take that x of omega of fourier transform that is your x of t value is equal to e to the power of minus t to the power of 4 into cos t is the first thing so next important thing the fourier transform of x of t is x of omega so using the differentiation property we can write like this that is t into x of t is equal to j into d x of omega divided by d omega so after this we are trying to write like this that is t into x of t so t divided by j into x of t is equal to d x of omega divided by d omega and now we can consider this as f of t and this as f of omega so we can write at omega is equal to 0 that means nothing but an f of 0 f of 0 is equal to f of t so f of 0 means nothing but an area under your f of t into dt as per the area property that is integral minus infinite to plus infinite f of t if you see f of t is equal to t by j into x of t that is t by j into x of t into dt so obviously if you find out that x of t is even function and therefore t into x of t become odd function area under the odd function is equal to 0 that means your f of 0 is equal to 0 so this is the solution for the given question so next question that is energy of x of t is e and the energy of 2x into 2t minus 1 is uh, c into e then the value of c he was asking obviously we solve this question in the classroom also so talking about the energy and the power properties so x of t ka energy is e there is no effect of uh, time shifting on the and time reversal 
and amplitude reversal on the energy. Therefore, what happens here is, so 2 into x of 2 t minus 1, there is no effect of time uh, shifting. So, effect of time scaling, obviously we studied that become e by 2 because a value is equal to 2, scale factor value e by 2 and 2 is there, capital A is equal to 2, we studied a square. So, this become 2 square, this will cancel out, the answer is equal to 2 into e, the value of c is equal to 2. Okay. So, remaining questions we will deal with go ahead, sir. Okay. Thank you, Naveen sir. So, let us solve next question. Next question kuch aisa hai, for x of n z transform is x of z, now there is another signal y n or y n kya hai x of 2 n hai, to hume y z or x of z ko relate karna hai, ok. So, dho so is tarah badhenge, z transform ka formula aap kuch is tarah likhte hai, summation y of n z ki power minus n range of n minus infinite to infinite, phir aap is tarah likhte hai summation minus infinite to infinite or y of n kitna hai x of 2 n into z ki power minus n. So, phir iske baad kya karna let us put 2 n is equal to m. Ab m ke terms mein ise likhte hai. To ise likhenge summation x of m z ki power minus m by 2. Yahan se agar aap n likhte to n ko aap kya likhte m by 2. Ek chiz or क्योंकि n integer है तो m even integer होगा क्योंकि 2 into any integer will be even integer मतलब दोस्तों m यहाँ पर क्या है m even integer है अब इसे आप इस form में भी लिख सकते हैं summation x of m plus minus one की power m into x of m divided by two into z की power minus m by two क्योंकि अगर अगर यहाँ पर आप m का integer value odd integer value put करेंगे तो ये वाला term zero हो जाएगा और जब m का even integer value put करेंगे तो इस वाले term से वापस से क्या मिलेगा x of m मिलेगा और वही x of m यहाँ पर है तो range of m is now minus infinite to infinite अब इसे दो part में बस क्यों लिखो थोड़ा arrange करो तो आप ऐसे लिखते one by two को outside दो part में summation लिखो x of n x of m z ki power minus m by 2 plus summation minus 1 ki power m x of m into z ki power minus m by 2. Okay, do part mein humne likha, thoda or rearrange kariya aap isko 1 by 2 summation x of m, isse hum log lik sakte hai z ki power 1 by 2 whole power minus m, thik hai? इसी तरह सेकेंड पार्ट में अरेंज करो x ऑफ m x ऑफ m ओके okay, अब ये जो टर्म है इस टर्म को आप माइनस वन की पावर माइनस एम भी लिख सकते हैं क्योंकि ये दोनों न्यूमरिकली क्या होते हैं दोस्तों सेम ओके okay, तो सपोज कि हमने माइनस वन की पावर m को इससे रिप्लेस कर दिया अब इन दोनों टर्म्स को अगर आप रीअरेंज करेंगे तो आप लिखते माइनस जेड की पावर वन बाई टू होल पावर माइनस एम अब अगर आप ध्यान से देखें तो इसमें ये जो फर्स्ट वाला टर्म है दिस टर्म इज इक्वल टू एक्स ऑफ जेड की पावर वन बाई टू और इसमें ये जो सेकेंड टर्म है दिस इज इक्वल टू एक्स ऑफ माइनस जेड की पावर वन बाई टू ओके अब इसके बाद ऑप्शंस को अगर हम लोग देखें सो वन बाय टू वन बाय टू x of z की power 1 by 2 plus x of minus z की power 1 by 2 आप देखिए यही हमने यहाँ पर obtain किया है इसका मतलब option correct answer कौन सा option आया option D अब next question की ओर चलते हैं so next question is related to input output relationship of a system इसमें हमें find out करना है given system linear है या non linear है time variant है या invariant है आप अगर इस रिलेशनशिप पर लॉ ऑफ सुपरपोजिशन अप्लाई करें तो लॉ ऑफ सुपरपोजिशन सेटिस्फाई होता है एडिटिविटी भी सेटिस्फाई होगा और होमोजिनिटी भी सेटिस्फाई होगा और दोस्तों अगर दोनों लॉज फॉलो हो जाते हैं तो सिस्टम कैसा लीनियर सो दिस सिस्टम विल बी लीनियर सिस्टम एंड वाट अबाउट टाइम इन वेरियंस इसमें एक सिंपल सा मैं ट्रिक बता देता हूँ बिकॉज ऑफ ई की पावर माइनस टी 
this system is going to violate time invariance property and because of violation of time invariance property what is the nature of system time variant इसे दूसरे टर्म्स में हम लोग कह सकते हैं नॉट टाइम इनवेरियंट नॉट टाइम इनवेरियंट का मतलब कैसा है टाइम वेरियंट ओके तो सिस्टम का नेचर लीनियर है और साथ में ये क्या है टाइम वेरियंट अगर आप देखें तो किस ऑप्शन में मैच हो रहा है ऑप्शन बी ओके सिग्नल के लिए इतना ही अब इसके बाद नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन और नेक्स्ट सब्जेक्ट की ओर हम लोग स्विच करते हैं Hello everyone. Let's now take control system questions. It's been a long time that you have, you people have been uh, listening very patiently. I'll do it at a faster rate, as you know. Open loop transfer function of a system is given. Question is to find the angle of departure at the pole minus 1 plus j2. So first of all, we need to have uh, the pole 0 pattern. This system has got two poles and two zeros. Zeros are at plus 1, j1, minus j1. Poles are at minus 1, plus j2, and minus j2. Formula is to find the angle of departure. Question is to find angle of departure. Formula plus r minus 180 degree plus phi from complex poles, where phi is the net angle contribution at the complex pole due to all other poles and zeros. What we need to do? We need to draw phase r from every zero and pole of the system to this complex pole. Phase contributed by this phase r is 90 degree. Phase contributed by this phase r, it is 180 degree minus tan inverse of 2, 1 by 2 phase should be measured with respect to positive real axis in any direction of your choice. Phase contributed by this phase R is 180 degree minus tan inverse of 3 by 2. Right. So, phase due to zeros, it is 180 degree minus tan inverse 0 0.5, 180 degree minus tan inverse of uh, 1.5 and this is 90 degree that value you calculate and put it here this becomes plus r minus 7 degree that is answer to the question 7 point something but I just made it to 7 degree that's a simple question question is to find the transfer function no need of Mason formula anything that's a simple block diagram see g for that there is one unit of positive feedback g by 1 minus g this unit for that Again, there is a feedback, negative of negative, positive, positive feedback. So, when there is a unity positive feedback, what we do is, we subtract the numerator from the denominator. That is the shortcut we got. In case of negative feedback, we add the numerator with the denominator. And in case of positive feedback, we subtract the numerator from the denominator. So, answer is g by 1 minus 2g. Right, that is the answer. In this question, Consider a stable closed loop system shown in the figure. 
the asymptotic board magnitude plot has a constant slope of minus 20 dB per decade at least till 100 radian per second with a gain crossover frequency being 10 radian per second. The phase remains to be constant at minus 90 degree up to omega is equal to 10 radian per second. What is the steady state of the system for ramp input? See, the initial slope which indicates the type of the system, initial slope of the board plot is minus 20 dB per decade which means that the open loop transfer function of the system is k upon s. How to find k? At frequency 10, magnitude is given to be 0 dB. From this we can conclude that at frequency 1, magnitude becomes 20 decibel because the slope is minus 20 dB per decade. So, frequency at magnitude 1 becomes 20 log k to the base 10 of the first part of the board plot, k value 10, this is 10, this itself is kv. Steady state error of a type 1 system for ramp input 1 by kv, point 1 is the answer to the question. There is another question here which is not mentioned, I am just having a slide here. Consider the cascaded system, we have got a system here with 1 upon s plus, s plus 1 is a block and another block s plus 40 upon s plus 20. In this question, neglecting the faster components of the transient response, which of the following option? Is the first order pole only approximation of such a uh, system having no effect on the steady state value? See, there are two types of poles. One is ordinary, the other is dominant. Dominant is the one which has got large time constant due to which the transients die slowly and ordinary is the one which has got uh, least time constant due to which the transients dies out rapidly. So, we are asked to remove the ordinary things. Dominant is the one which is close to origin which is minus 1. Ordinary is the one which is at a distance of at least 5 times or more. So, these two being ordinary, they will be removed, but that should be done from the time constant form, then only the DC gain of the system is not affected. Time constant form of this function being s plus 1, 1 by 20 s plus 1. When these are eliminated, answer to the question becomes 2 upon s plus 1. Now, the next question is taken care by. In this particular question, for a second order, for a second order system, this is a standard second order closed loop control system, they have mentioned something with respect to a system 1, something with respect to a system 2. This is nothing but the introduction with respect to the pole location of the particular system. With respect to this, we all know very well this theta is nothing but what? Is this theta is giving us the information with respect to our delta. Delta is nothing but what? Cos theta. Delta is nothing but what? Cos of theta. So, in this way, for the system number 1, what will be your delta? Delta will be equal to, delta 1 will be equal to what? Cos of 60 degree, cos of 60 degree and something it will be like 0 0.5. Okay. Now, come to the next. What about, what, what about system 2? Delta 2 will be equal to cos of 70 degree. We are going to get something delta 2. Okay. The calculated magnitude we will get. As we are uh, observing the pole locations, with respect to that, it is very clear to us that it is under damp response and with respect to the tolerable frequency, tolerable error band, we can say the settling time will be equal to what? 4 divided by zeta omega n, settling time, approximate with respect to the tolerant uh, energy, uh, tolerant error band. So, we will calculate something here that is nothing but the settling time T s 1. We will calculate with respect to system 2 that is nothing but what T s 2 and once we will calculate both the value T s 1 and T s 2, T s 1 is becoming something approximately equal to 2.667, 2.667 and here the T s 2 is becoming something 11 point 
11.69 something means what means T S 2 settling time of the second system is greater than the T S 1 that is the settling time of the system 1. So, like that if we are going to observe the option yes in the option D it was available answer of this particular question is option D other subjects other question going to be taken by other faculties thank you. Hi, greeting of the day <coughs> and this is the question has been given regarding that uh, this question belongs to the distribution. Uh, so, in this what is happening here is the, that uh, I think that only you are clear with the question. Here the answer is that here you have to see one thing is that here is small modification I will make it. It is actually the generator. Okay? When from this, when it is a generator from this one it is the load and it is the load and this is the load current I1. The question is about okay. the, the question you know that one is according to that one. So, through this branching this current will go through this branching this current will go. Now, the two power loss or the voltage drop if the voltage drop is minimum then the power loss is also been minimum. So, we have to take that care of that voltage drop here and voltage drop here whatever amount of the current is coming here a current is coming here here is as the exact figures we do not know on guess we can go it is a 4 z and it is a 2 z. So, therefore, what is happening is the power loss to be minimum the voltage drop to be minimum the voltage drop to be minimum means what is happening is as it is being the dimension of the 4 z this branch should be removed ok. What is the answer then the B 4 ok this is the answer it is ok this would have to be removed ok. Another questions will be there that will be taken by our uh, colleague Bupender. Good evening. So, I uh, we have this memory based question <coughs> from economic load dispatch. This is a easy, I, I would say it is a easy question. <coughs> if you have attended the class, you will have to ho jayega mere khal se. Isme koi dikkat nahi aaya hoga. जो डेटा मेरे पास है जो बेसिकली <coughs> हमको जो क्वेश्चन uh, दिया गया है उस क्वेश्चन में ये जीरो जनरेशन पे uh, जो जनरेटर ए है उसका इंक्रीमेंटल कॉस्ट जो है वो 8000 और जीरो पे 6000 में देके सॉल्व कर रहा हूं जो मुझे ज्यादातर लोगों ने बोला हालांकि कुछ लोगों ने बोला था कि सर 10 जब पीजी uh, की वैल्यू 10 थी उस समय ये जीरो पे था तो मैं जीरो पे 6000 और जीरो पे 8000 लेके सॉल्व कर रहा हूं और उसके बाद ये आसान क्वेश्चन है कोई बड़ी बात नहीं अब देखोगे दोनों के लिए मिनिमम जो है दोनों बेसिकली क्वेश्चन को पढ़ लेते हैं आपको आ, एक आ, एक प्लांट है एक जनरेटिंग प्लांट है जिसमें दो जनरेटिंग यूनिट है दो जनरेटिंग यूनिट है दोनों जनरेटिंग यूनिट के लिए इंक्रीमेंटल कॉस्ट कर्व दिया हुआ है ठीक है ऐसा क्वेश्चन हम लोगों ने क्लास में भी किया है 
तो ये दोनों दोनों प्लांट के लिए इंक्रीमेंटल कॉस्ट कर दिया दोनों जनरेटिंग यूनिट के लिए इंक्रीमेंटल कॉस्ट कर दिया है ये जनरेटिंग यूनिट जो ए है इसके लिए दिया हुआ है इसका मिनिमम जीरो दिख रहा है और मैक्सिमम की जरूरत नहीं है वैसे मैक्सिमम मेरे ख्याल से वन दिख रहा है ठीक है और जो जनरेटिंग यूनिट नंबर बी है उसका मिनिमम जीरो दिख रहा है और मैक्सिमम इसका भी 150 फिफ्टी मेगावॉट दिख रहा है ये इंक्रीमेंटल कॉस्ट की वैल्यू है ठीक है ये इंक्रीमेंटल कॉस्ट है इसका यूनिट होगा रुपीस पर मेगावॉट आवर और ये पीजी है अब इन्होंने पूछा क्या है आपसे बेसिकली <coughs> इन्होंने आपसे पूछा क्या है कि ये दो जनरेटिंग यूनिट मिल जो लोड को सप्लाई दे रहे हैं लोड को सप्लाई कर रहे हैं कौन से इंक्रीमेंटल कॉस्ट पे 7400 रुपीस पर मेगावाट आवर पे ये दोनों दोनों यूनिट मिलके एक पर्टिकुलर डिमांड है उस डिमांड को इस इस प्लांट इंक्रीमेंटल कॉस्ट पे सप्लाई कर रहे तो अगर आपको प्लांट इंक्रीमेंटल कॉस्ट की वैल्यू दी हुई है ठीक है प्लांट इंक्रीमेंटल कॉस्ट की वैल्यू दी हुई है कितनी दी हुई है सेवेंटी फोर थाउजेंड पर मेगावाट आवर उसके लिए आपसे पूछा है कि पीडी कितना है ठीक है आपको इसमें पीडी बताना है तो ये बहुत आसान क्वेश्चन है अगर आप इसको सॉल्व करोगे सबसे पहले हमको दोनों दोनों जो दो जनरेटिंग यूनिट है दोनों के लिए हमको कर्व डेवलप करना होगा ठीक है कर्व तो दिया हुआ है बेसिकली हमको ये क्या हो गया ये क्या हो गया ये कैसे चला गया ये मैंने बैक किया तो चला ही गया अच्छा उड़ उड़ गया गया क्या कैसे 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 बैक करने पे करेंगे इमेज का वो इमेज का वो इमेज का क्लिक हो गया तो फिर क्या आप कर लो ना थोड़ा सा इसको कौन सा ये यहीं पे यहीं पे यहीं पे कुछ नहीं चला गया हाँ ये कौन सा क्वेश्चन है ये तो अलग है जो क्वेश्चन अनम्यूट हो गया ना ठीक है तो दोबारा से आ जाते हैं <coughs> हमारे पास ये इकोनॉमिक अरे यार क्या हो रहा है ये क्या हो रहा है ये थोड़ा सा डिस्टरबेंस हो गया था ठीक है आवाज जा रही है ना? 
तो हमारे पास ये इकोनॉमिक लोड डिस्पैच का क्वेश्चन है जो डेटा हमारे पास है जो क्वेश्चन चूंकि मेमोरी बेस्ड क्वेश्चन है तो जो डेटा हमारे पास सबसे ऑथेंटिक आया है वो डेटा के हिसाब से आपको एक प्लांट दिया हुआ है जिसमें दो जनरेटिंग यूनिट एक है जनरेटिंग यूनिट ए और दूसरा है जनरेटिंग यूनिट बी दोनों मिल एक डिमांड पी को सप्लाई कर रहे हैं आपको बोला गया है क्वेश्चन में कि ये जो ये जो डिमांड है जिसको दोनों मिलके सप्लाई कर रहे हैं वो सिस्टम की इंक्रीमेंटल कॉस्ट प्लांट इंक्रीमेंटल कॉस्ट की कौन सी वैल्यू सेवेंटी फोर हंड्रेड रुपीज़ पर मेगावाट आवर की वैल्यू पे सप्लाई कर यानी आपको इस क्वेश्चन में लैमडा की वैल्यू दी हुई लैमडा दिया हुआ है सेवेंटी फोर हंड्रेड रुपीज़ पर मेगावाट आवर और आपसे पूछा क्या गया है कि ये पी कितना है वट इज़ दिस कॉमन डिमांड ये पी पूछा गया तो उससे पहले इस क्वेश्चन को सॉल्व करने से पहले अच्छा ये जो दो कर्व दिए हुए हैं वो आपको इंक्रीमेंटल कॉस्ट कर्व दिए हुए हैं बेसिकली यहाँ इस एक्सिस पे इंक्रीमेंटल कॉस्ट है इस एक्सिस पे इंक्रीमेंटल कॉस्ट है और इस एक्सिस पे जनरेशन है ठीक है जनरेशन तो हमको क्या करना होगा सबसे पहले इन दोनों यूनिट के लिए जो इंक्रीमेंटल कॉस्ट कर्व दिए हैं उनकी मदद से इंक्रीमेंटल कॉस्ट के लिए इक्वेशन लिखना होगा जैसे अगर हम जो जनरेटिंग यूनिट ए है उसके लिए लिखते हैं आई सी ए लिखेंगे जो कि फंक्शन होगा पी जी ए का उसके लिए आपको बेसिकली स्ट्रेट लाइन इक्वेशन लिखना है वाईक्वल टू एम एक्स प्लस सी अगर आप देखोगे तो यहाँ पे देखो नोटिस करो तो हंड्रेड जो जनरेशन है उस पर जनरेटर जनरेटिंग यूनिट ए के लिए जो आई की वैल्यू है वो टेन है और ज़ीरो पे जो वैल्यू है जीरो पे जो वैल्यू है वो एट थाउजेंड तो बेसिकली अगर हम एम की वैल्यू निकालें तो वाई टू माइनस वाई वन करेंगे तो ये आ जाएगा टू थाउजेंड और ये आ जाएगा हंड्रेड तो बेसिकली जो जनरेटिंग यूनिट ए है उसके लिए जो स्लोप होगा वो होगा टू थाउजेंड बाई टू थाउजेंड डिवाइडेड बाई वन हंड्रेड ये हो जाएगा तो दिस वाई इक्वल टू एम एक्स एक्स की जगह यहाँ पी हो जाएगा और C की वैल्यू क्या होगी जब पी जी ए की वैल्यू जीरो है उस समय जो आई सी ए की वैल्यू है यानी जो एट थाउजेंड वैल्यू है वो हो जाएगा C यहाँ पे तो C हो गया यहाँ पे एट थाउजेंड तो ये आ गया आई सी ए जो इंक्रीमेंटल कॉस्ट कर्व है जो इंक्रीमेंटल कॉस्ट यूनिट वन के लिए इक्वेशन है वो ये आ गया ऐसे ही जब आप यूनिट टू के लिए निकालेंगे यूनिट टू यानी बी के लिए निकालेंगे तो उसके लिए जो स्लोप आएगा आप स्लोप देख सकते हो जो अगर ये कर्व हमको सही मिला है तो स्लोप भी सही होगा तो बेसिकली 100 पे आप देखो वैल्यू 10,000 है और उसके बाद यहाँ पे देखो जीरो पे क्या वैल्यू है 4,000 तो ये अगर ये लेंथ हम देखें बेसिकली इतना तो आप जानते ही होंगे ये लेंथ जो है स्लोप निकालने के लिए बी का ये लेंथ कितना आ जाएगा फोर आ जाएगा वन टू थ्री फोर फोर थाउजेंड और डिवाइडेड बाई ये कितना है हंड्रेड तो बेसिकली यहां पे 40 आ जाएगा सीधे लिख देता हूं 40 40 PGB और इसके लिए जो C की वैल्यू होगी जीरो पे 6000 है तो 6000 अब ध्यान दो लैमडा की वैल्यू आपको दिया है प्लांट का इंक्रीमेंटल कॉस्ट दिया है प्लांट का इंक्रीमेंटल कॉस्ट लैमडा बेसिकली क्या होता है वो होता है आई सी वन यानी आई सी एक्वल टू आई सी बी IC2 की जगह ICB वो है 7400 जो क्वेश्चन में दिया है ठीक है यहां से हम क्या निकालेंगे ICA निकालेंगे कितना आ जाएगा ICA ICA की वैल्यू अगर हम यहां से रखें ICA का इक्वेशन है हमारे पास 20 20 PGA प्लस 8000 इक्वल टू 7400 जब आप इसको सॉल्व करोगे तो यहां से PGA जो आएगा वो कितना आ जाएगा आप देख सकते हो पी जो आएगा ये इधर जाएगा तो नेगेटिव हो जाएगा तो पी जी यहाँ पर नेगेटिव समथिंग होगा ठीक है पी जी ए नेगेटिव होगा यानी जीरो से कम होगा लेस देन जीरो होगा अच्छा पी जी जो है वो नेगेटिव होगा यानी जीरो जो इसका मिनिमम है उससे कम होगा अच्छा ऐसे जब आप पी जी टू निकालने जाओगे आई सी बी को सेवेंटी फोर हंड्रेड रख के पी जी बी निकालोगे तो कितना आ जाएगा आई सी बी क्या है फोर्टी पी जी बी प्लस सिक्स थाउजेंड इक्वल टू सेवेंटी फोर हंड्रेड रख के जब आप पी जी बी निकालोगे तो ये आता है 
कितना आ जाएगा सेवेंटी फोर हंड्रेड माइनस सिक्स थाउजेंड डिवाइडेड बाई फोर्टी ये आ जाएगा आपका आ जाएगा ये थर्टी फाइव आप चेक कर सकते हैं जरा कैलकुलेटर में थर्टी फाइव अब यहाँ से जब हमने देखो ऐसे बेसिकली मैंने आपको पढ़ाते समय तीन केस पढ़ाया था ये बेसिकली तीन केस कह लो या या इसको आप जो तीन केस पढ़ाया था तीन टाइप के क्वेश्चन पढ़ा तीन टाइप के सिचुएशन uh, इसमें दिखाए थे उसमें ये टाइप टू का क्वेश्चन ये टाइप टू टाइप टू का क्वेश्चन है इस टाइप टू में मैंने क्या कहा था कि बेसिकली जब आपको मिनिमा और मैक्सिमा दिया हुआ है जनरेशन का जब लिमिट्स दिए हुए हैं तो बेसिकली आपको विदाउट लिमिट सॉल्व करना है यानी आपको आई सी एक्वल टू आई सी बी इक्वल टू लेमडा रख के आपने सॉल्व किया ठीक है ये टाइप टू का क्वेश्चन है लेकिन आप उसको टाइप वन की तरह सॉल्व करेंगे यानी आई सी एक्वल टू आई सी बी रख के सॉल्व करेंगे सॉल्व करने पर जो आंसर आता है जैसे पी के लिए नेगेटिव वैल्यू आया है और पी के लिए ये थर्टी वैल्यू आया है बेसिकली मैंने जब सॉल्व किया तो थर्टी फाइव आ रहा था एक बार चेक कर लेते हैं सेवेंटी फोर हंड्रेड माइनस सिक्स थाउजेंड डिवाइडेड बाई फोर्टी इस थर्टी फाइव तो जब आपने बेसिकली ये केस टू का सवाल है ठीक है केस टू के सवाल में क्या फर्क है आपको लिमिट दिए तो जब केस टू का सवाल आता है टाइप टू का जो सवाल आता है उसमें आपको करना क्या होता है टाइप वन की तरह सॉल्व करिए आई सी ए इक्वल टू आई सी बी रख के सॉल्व कीजिए सॉल्व करने के बाद जो आपको आंसर मिला है इस आंसर में आप नोटिस करिए तो ये अब जो जो यूनिट ए का आउटपुट आ रहा है केस वन की तरह सॉल्व करके जो यूनिट ए का आउटपुट आ रहा है वो उसके मिनिमम लिमिट को वैलिड कर रहा है जीरो से कम आ रहा है और दूसरा अपने लिमिट के भीतर है कैसे पता जीरो लिमिट के भीतर है भाई पी जो दूसरे का लिमिट है जो जनरेटर बी का लिमिट है वो जीरो से वन फिफ्टी है और थर्टी फाइव उसके भीतर है तो मैंने क्या बताया था कि अगर एक लिमिट को वॉलेट कर रहा है और दूसरा लिमिट के भीतर है तो जो आंसर करेक्शन बेसिकली ये आंसर तो आप नहीं ले सकते आप ये जीरो से कम नहीं दिखा सकते करेक्ट कर सकते हैं केस टू में आप करेक्शन करते हैं और करेक्शन कैसे होता है अगर एक अपने मिनिमम लिमिट को वॉलेट कर रहे हैं और दूसरा लिमिट में है तो आपको क्या करना होगा जो अपने जिस लिमिट को वैलिड कर रहा है उसको उस लिमिट पे फिक्स करेंगे तो लिमिट कितनी है जीरो है तो जीरो पे इसको फिक्स करेंगे और दूसरा जो है पीजीबी दूसरा जो है वो रिमेनिंग उसको दे देगा तो कितना आ जाएगा ये आ जाएगा पीजीबी इसके हिसाब से सेवेंटी फोर हंड्रेड के हिसाब से पी आ जाएगा थर्टी फाइव तो कुल मिला के पी जी ए आ गया और पी जो आ गया वो आ गया कितना 35 इस हिसाब से जो डिमांड आएगा वो कितना आ जाएगा जो डिमांड आएगा पीबी जो कि पीजीए प्लस पीजीबी है वो आ जाएगा 35 मेगावाट तो जो क्वेश्चन हमारे पास है उसके हिसाब से दिस इज द आंसर डिमांड जो पूछा है जो कॉमन लोड पूछा है वो 35 आ जाएगा तो दिस इज द आंसर फॉर द इकोनॉमिक डिस्पैच प्रॉब्लम नेक्स्ट प्रॉब्लम में आपको क्या दिया है एक सिस्टम दिया है तीन बस का और इन तीन बस के सिस्टम में इन्होंने कहा है कि देखो ऐसे अगर ध्यान देंगे तो इन्होंने क्या लिखा है कि द रियल पावर फ्लो फ्रॉम बस वन द रियल पावर फ्लो फ्रॉम बस वन टू बस टू इज जीरो पर यूनिट यानी वन से टू की तरफ पावर का फ्लो जीरो है जीरो पर यूनिट कोई पावर का फ्लो वन से टू की तरफ नहीं हो रहा है ठीक है यानी जो भी पी वन है वो इधर की तरफ फ्लो होगा और जो पी टू है वो इधर की तरफ फ्लो होगा अच्छा इन्होंने क्या बोला है कि जो रिलेशन है पी वन पी टू में क्वेश्चन में दिया है कि पी वन इज इक्वल टू एम पी टू ये दिया है और उसके बाद अल्फा और ये जो अल्फा बीटा और गामा है आपस में रिलेशन पूछा है ठीक है अब सब अब कुछ डेटा और देखते हैं इन्होंने ये भी कहा है कि तीनों बस की जो वोल्टेज है वो वन पर यूनिट तीनों बस की वोल्टेज वन पर यूनिट है और वोल्टेज फेज एंगल्स आर वेरी स्मॉल आप देखोगे गेट में एक इस तरह का क्वेश्चन पहले भी आ चुका है तो तीनों की वैल्यूज जो है वन पर यूनिट है वोल्टेज की और जो फेज एंगल है वो बहुत ही स्मॉल है अच्छा एक चीज सोचो अगर दो अगर इस लाइन में पावर का फ्लो नहीं हो रहा है इसका क्या मतलब हुआ पावर का फ्लो अगर इस लाइन में नहीं हो रहा है इसका मतलब ये हुआ कि अगर मैं इसकी एंगल को जीरो डिग्री मान लू लेट सी कि बस थ्री के एंगल को मैं जीरो डिग्री मान लूं और उससे थीटा डिग्री लीड करता हुआ इसको दिखा दूं ठीक है ये जीरो डिग्री पे है और इस जीरो से बस थ्री की वोल्टेज से बस वन का वोल्टेज अगर थीटा डिग्री लीड कर रहा है 
और इधर पावर फ्लो नहीं हो रहा है इसका मतलब इसमें फेज डिफरेंस जीरो एक्टिव पावर का फ्लो जीरो का मतलब फेज डिफरेंस जीरो है फेज डिफरेंस जीरो का मतलब अगर ये थीटा है तो ये भी थीटा हो ठीक अब बस कुछ करना नहीं है आपको आपको पी के लिए बेसिकली इस लाइन में पावर का फ्लो पी है इस लाइन में पावर का फ्लो पी है दोनों के लिए इक्वेशन लिखना है और इस रिलेशन को यूज करके अल्फा बीटा गामा में जो भी रिलेशन है डेवलप कर लेना है P1 का इक्वेशन क्या होगा P1 का जो इक्वेशन होगा वो होगा V1 वन इन टू वी थ्री वी वन वन है वी थ्री भी वन है डिवाइडेड बाई जे बीटा एक्स ओम में लिखा है यहाँ पे इम्पिडेंस की रिएक्टेंस की वैल्यू बट अब वो क्वेश्चन में ओम में था या पर यूनिट में था ये मुझे नहीं पता बट अगर ओम में भी लेते हो तो ओम को पर यूनिट में आप बदलोगे तो एक कॉमन फैक्टर आएगा बेस से डिवाइड करने के लिए कॉमन फैक्टर आएगा और वो फैक्टर से कैंसिल आउट वो फैक्टर कैंसिल आउट हो जाएगा तो मैं बीटा बीटा एक्स लिख के सॉल्व कर लूँ ठीक है ये रिएक्टेंस हो गया वी वन वी टू अपन एक्स और साथ में साइन अगर ये थीटा है और ये जीरो है तो दोनों के बीच का डिफरेंस साइन थीटा तो ये साइन थीटा अच्छा इन्होंने इन्होंने बोला है कि एंगल्स बहुत स्मॉल है तो साइन थीटा की जगह आप थीटा भी लिख सकते हो बिकॉज फॉर स्मॉल वैल्यूज ऑफ थीटा साइन थीटा को आप थीटा रेडियन ले सकते हो तो ये पी वन का रिलेशन है ऐसे ही जब आप पी टू लिखोगे तो पी टू के लिए भी क्या है ये है इसका वैल्यू वन है वोल्टेज की इसकी भी वन है डिवाइडेड बाई ये हो गया गामा एक्स फिर साइन यहाँ पे भी थीटा ही होगा ठीक है अब इन्होंने कहा कि पी वन इज इक्वल टू एम पी टू है तो पी वन की वैल्यू वन इन टू वन अपॉन बीटा एक्स साइन थीटा दिस इज पी वन इक्वल टू एम पी टू की जगह लिखना है वन इन टू वन अपॉन गामा एक्स साइन थीटा यहाँ से बहुत सारी चीजें कैंसिल हो रही हैं जैसे साइन थीटा कैंसिल हो रहा है अगर साइन थीटा को थीटा लोगे तो थीटा कैंसिल हो रहा है और अगर आप पर यूनिट में इसको बदलने के लिए डिवाइड भी करोगे वो भी कैंसिल हो जाएगा साथ में एक्स भी कैंसिल हो रहा है तो यहाँ से आपको क्या मिल जाएगा अगर यहाँ से आप देखो तो वन अपॉन बीटा इज इक्वल टू एम अपॉन गामा आर यानी यहाँ से आपको गामा इज इक्वल टू गामा इज इक्वल टू एम बीटा तो ये रिलेशन है गामा इज इक्वल टू एम बीटा ये आ जाएगा होपफुली ये क्वेश्चन सबको आसान लगा हो गामा इज इक्वल टू एम बीटा ये आंसर आ जाएगा नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन में क्या है नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन जो है हमारा वो इक्वल एरिया क्राइटेरिया का क्वेश्चन है इस क्वेश्चन में इन्होंने कहा है कि एक सिस्टम है जो स्टडी स्टेट कंडीशन में स्टेबल इक्विलिब्रियम पॉइंट पे ऑपरेट कर रहा है और नॉर्मल कंडीशन में जो उसके लिए पी है वो है पी मैक्स साइन डेल्ट ठीक है तो अगर हम नॉर्मल कंडीशन में एक कर बना लें लेट से नॉर्मल कंडीशन का पावर एंगल कर बना लेते ये है पी मैक्स तो ये है नॉर्मल कंडीशन का कर फॉल्ट होने से पहले का कर भाई पी इज इक्वल टू पी मैक्स साइन डेल्ट अच्छा इन्होंने क्वेश्चन में बोला है कि जो पीएम है जो मैकेनिकल इनपुट है वो 0.5 टाइम्स 0.5 टाइम्स पी पी मैक्स है यानी जो पीएम है पीएम इज इक्वल टू 0.5 पी मैक्स तो फॉल्ट होने से पहले की नॉर्मल कंडीशन में सिंक्रोनस स्पीड पे डेल्टा की कौन सी वैल्यू पे ऑपरेट करेगा ये आप समझ सकते हैं कितने पे ऑपरेट करेगा थर्टी डिग्री पे आप बड़े आराम से निकाल सकते हैं ये नॉर्मल कंडीशन में कौन सी ऑपरेटिंग पॉइंट पे ऑपरेट करेगा इस ऑपरेटिंग पॉइंट पे ऑपरेट करेगा इस ऑपरेटिंग एंगल के साथ और ऑपरेट करते समय नॉर्मल कंडीशन में स्पीड क्या होगी सिंक्रोनस होगी तो ये डिस्टरबेंस से पहले की कहानी है ठीक है ये डिस्टरबेंस से पहले की कहानी है फिर उन्होंने कहा कि एक फॉल्ट हुआ है लाइन टू पे और फॉल्ट होने की वजह से जब भी फॉल्ट होता है आउटपुट मशीन का डाउन हो जाता है तो उन्होंने कहा कि फॉल्ट होने की वजह से जो लाइन जो लाइन पे फॉल्ट हुआ उसकी वजह से आउटपुट जो है मशीन का आउटपुट जनरेटर का आउटपुट कम हो गया है और कम हो के कितना कम हुआ है जीरो पॉइंट फाइव पी मैक्स यानी जो पी एम है उससे कम है यानी अगर हम पी अगर हम ड्यूरिंग फॉल्ट कर बनाते हैं तो ड्यूरिंग फॉल्ट कर जो होगा उसका मैक्सिमा जो है उसका मैक्सिमा जो है वो जीरो पॉइंट फाइव पी मैक्स से कम होगा यानी ड्यूरिंग फॉल्ट कंडीशन कभी भी पी ई पी एम से कम ही है हर जगह पी ई पी एम से कम है ड्यूरिंग फॉल्ट कंडीशन जो पी ई है वो जीरो पॉइंट फाइव पी मैक्स से कम है यानी जो मैक्सिमा होगा ड्यूरिंग फॉल्ट कंडीशन जो पी एम है वो जीरो पॉइंट फाइव पी मैक्स से कम होगा तो ये ड्यूरिंग फॉल्ट कंडीशन की कहानी बताया है फिर उसने कहा फॉल्ट क्लियर किया है हमने लाइन को आइसोलेट करके और फॉल्ट क्लियर करने के बाद जो फॉल्ट को क्लियर करने के बाद जो पी है 
वो कितना दिया इन्होंने फॉल्ट को क्लियर करने के बाद पोस्ट फॉल्ट कंडीशन में जो पी है वो पी मैक्स फॉल्ट क्लियर होने के बाद पीई जो है वो पी मैक्स बाय रूट टू साइन डेल्टा ये इक्वेशन है फॉल्ट क्लियर होने के बाद अच्छा ड्यूरिंग फॉल्ट कंडीशन में उन्होंने क्या पीई है वो दिया नहीं ये आपको पता नहीं है और इसकी आपको जरूरत भी नहीं है उन्होंने क्रिटिकल क्लियरिंग एंगल आपको दे दिया है कि फॉल्ट को क्लियर करने के लिए क्लियर फॉल्ट को क्रिटिकल कंडीशन में क्लियर किया गया और क्रिटिकल क्लियरिंग एंगल नाइन्टी डिग्री मिला तो सबसे पहले जब फॉल्ट फॉल्ट से पहले की बात करें तो फॉल्ट से पहले ऑपरेटिंग पॉइंट यहाँ है जैसे ही फॉल्ट होगा ऑपरेटिंग पॉइंट शिफ्ट होकर यहाँ आ जाएगा ड्यूरिंग फॉल्ट कंडीशन आ जाएगा फिर उसके बाद मशीन एसेलरेट करेगा क्योंकि इनपुट से आउटपुट जो है वो कम हो चुका है मशीन एसेलरेट करेगा एसेलरेट करेगा तो स्पीड बढ़ जाएगी और बढ़ के सिंक्रोनस पहले से है मोर देन सिंक्रोनस हो जाएगी और मोर देन सिंक्रोनस होते ही डेल्टा बढ़ने लगेगा डेल्टा बढ़ते बढ़ते क्रिटिकल कंडीशन नाइन क्रिटिकल कंडीशन में हमने फॉल्ट को क्लियर किया है और वो क्रिटिकल क्लियरिंग एंगल क्वेश्चन में मैंसन है कितना डिग्री मैंसन है 90 डिग्री तो ये क्रिटिकल क्लियरिंग एंगल डेल सी आर मेंशन है कितना डिग्री 90 डिग्री अच्छा जब क्रिटिकल कंडीशन में आप क्लियर करते हो तो क्लियर करने के बाद जो ऑपरेटिंग पॉइंट पोस्ट फॉल्ट करते गया है क्रिटिकल कंडीशन में क्लियर करने का एक ही लॉजिक है कि जो आपको सिंक्रोनस स्पीड मिलेगा जो रोटर को सिंक्रोनस स्पीड मिलेगा वो क्रिटिकल पॉइंट पे पहुंचने से जस्ट पहले मिलेगा यानी यहाँ पे आपको सिंक्रोनस स्पीड मिलेगी अब ये वाला एंगल हम बड़े आसानी से निकाल सकते हैं कैसे निकाल सकते हैं थोड़ा भी आप यूज करोगे दिमाग को तो बेसिकली ये एंगल आ जाएगा आपको 45 डिग्री आप चेक करोगे ये एंगल आ जाएगा 45 डिग्री कैसे चेक करोगे इस कर्व का आपको इक्वेशन पता है पी मैक्स बाई रूट टू साइन डेल्टा इस पी मैक्स बाई रूट टू साइन डेल्टा में इसकी वैल्यू डेल्टा की जगह ये वैल्यू रखो लेट से डेल्टा वन है ये तो पी मैक्स बाई रूट टू साइन डेल्टा वन को जीरो पॉइंट फाइव पी मैक्स रख के सॉल्व करोगे ये फोर्टी फाइव आएगा और अगर ये फोर्टी फाइव है तो ये वन एटी माइनस फोर्टी फाइव माइनस फोर्टी फाइव इज वन थर्टी फाइव डिग्री तो ये जो डेल्टा टू मैक्स है वो है वन थर्टी फाइव डिग्री अब आपसे पूछा है कि वट इज दिलेटिंग एरिया एसोलेटिंग एरिया ए वन पूछा है ए वन आपको पता है क्रिटिकल कंडीशन में जो एसोलेटिंग एरिया होता है ए वन ये जो एसोलेटिंग एरिया ए वन है वो बेसिकली जो मैक्सिमम डी एसोलेटिंग एरिया पॉसिबल होता है ए टू मैक्स उसके बराबर होता है तो बेसिकली आपसे पूछा क्या है आपसे पूछा है कि एसोलेटिंग एरिया बताओ एसोलेटिंग एरिया बताओ एसोलेटिंग एरिया ए वन पूछा है बट ए वन को सॉल्व करने में दिक्कत क्या है क्योंकि हमको इस ये कर्व का इक्वेशन नहीं पता हमको ड्यूरिंग फॉल्ट पी पी मैक्स नहीं पता ड्यूरिंग फॉल्ट पी ई एम क्या नहीं पता है बट उसकी जरूरत नहीं है आप ए वन की जगह ए टू मैक्स सॉल्व कर लो क्योंकि दोनों बराबर होते तो ए टू मैक्स कैसे सॉल्व हो कहाँ से कहाँ तक इंटीग्रेट करना होगा ए टू मैक्स सॉल्व होगा डेल सी आर से डेल टू मैक्स तक ठीक है तो क्या होगा एसोलेटिंग एरिया सॉल्व होगा ये डेल सी आर कितना डिग्री है 90 डिग्री और डेल टू मैक्स कितना है 135 डिग्री <coughs> अब किसको सॉल्व करोगे डी एसोलेशन के लिए पी माइनस पी करते हैं पी का इक्वेशन क्या है पी का इक्वेशन है आप देखो ये जो पी है एक कर्व है का इक्वेशन है पी मैक्स बाई रूट टू साइन डेल्टा तो ये पी हो गया और पी एम कितना पी एम कितना है जीरो पॉइंट फाइव पी मैक्स ये पी एम है इसको आपको सॉल्व करना होगा अब जब आप इसको सॉल्व करोगे सारी वैल्यूज पुट करोगे तो ये जीरो पॉइंट वन जैसे मैंने सॉल्व किया था तो जीरो पॉइंट वन पी मैक्स है तो ए वन जो है जो एसलरेटिंग एरिया ए वन है बेसिकली ए वन इज इक्वल टू ए टू मैक्स इज इक्वल टू आपको कितना मिला जीरो पॉइंट वन पी मैक्स अब आपसे यही पूछा है एसलेटिंग एरिया इज जीरो पॉइंट वन टाइम्स पी मैक्स तो इसका जो आंसर होगा जीरो पॉइंट वन आएगा तो इतने क्वेश्चन हमको मिले थे जिनका सोल्यूशन हमने दिया है सारे क्वेश्चन मेमोरी बेस्ड है क्वेश्चन अगर सही है तो सोल्यूशन सही है क्वेश्चन में अगर दिक्कत है <coughs> तो सोल्यूशन में भी दिक्कत हो तो नेक्स्ट सब्जेक्ट आप देख सकते हैं जो भी नेक्स्ट सब्जेक्ट होगा वो आपको मिलेगा थोड़े से ब्रेक के बाद
Hello dear students, this year from the networks 5 questions have been asked. Out of the 5 questions, right now we got the complete information about the only 4 questions. Out of these 5 questions, there 1 question given from the 2 port network, one is from the transients, one is from the theorems, now other 2 from the basics. Now let us start from the first question. <coughs> In this example, what is our requirement is the power delivered by voltage source. To get the power for this one, we can go for the so many methods, but one of the easy approach for this one, when the current source connected, when the current source connected, then the current source and resistance both are going to be series, this resistance can be neglected. When any resistance connected in series to current source, the current source can be neglected. After that one here, we can use the application, we can use the application source transformation. By using source transformation, we can convert this current source, we can convert the current source into equivalent voltage source. <coughs> if you convert this one to equivalent voltage source, now in the data itself given, what about this one is the alpha ohms this one, 10 volts. If you convert this one to equivalent to voltage source 10 and whatever this means is 1, that 2 ohms is neglected, 2 ohms is neglected. To get the power, what is our requirement is the, we have to find out the current in the network, we have to find the current network. In this example here, to get the current, simply we can reduce to the equivalent voltage by equivalent resistance, equivalent voltage by equivalent resistance. If you have equivalent voltage, now plus plus, similar polarities are connected, now similar polarity means subtraction we can reduce with the 10 minus 10. Either simplify can I say, we can convert the current equal to 0. If current equal to 0, directly can convert, the power is equal to 0. That means, this resistance data is not required to conclude our required answer. That means, as per given options, what the correct answer for this means is a 0, correct answer is a 0. Come to the next one. Now, it is a very basic question. In this one, what is our requirement is a junctions. If you come to the node, two types of nodes are there, one is a simple node, other one is a principal node. Now, principal node only, we name this one as a junction. What is the principal node definition? If more than two elements, if more than two elements are connected together, then the common point is known as a principal node. Okay, corresponds example here, it is a one junction. At the junction, always current division is a present. Okay, it is a junction 2, now it is a junction 3, now it is a junction 4, it is a junction 5 and junction 6. Okay, in these two, no element is a present, simply it is short circuited. Then the potential at this point, potential at this point, at this point both are the same, it is also F. That means, sir, total how many junctions are there in the given network? 6. Number of junctions are the 6. Uh, remaining two questions will be explained by the Naresh sir. The, this question is uh, from the transient analysis, just ask the question is here, find the time constant after switch is closed. So, first find out the what is the tau is equal to L by R equivalent, tau is equal to L by R, L equivalent by R equivalent. So, looking from one resistance, any resistance, here these two are in parallel, one Henry 1 Henry in parallel that is a 0.5, 1.5 and uh, here 2.5 is the L equivalent, 2.5 Henry's very simple. These two are in parallel series and series and this 1 ohm and 1 ohm are in series. So, R equivalent is here, looking from here now 1 ohm, 1 ohm, here uh, 2, I think uh, based on the given data is given here 1 Henry, 1 Henry. Maybe is a data is another thing maybe here 0 0.5, 1.5, 2.5 by 2, okay. 2 ones are 2 1.25. So, the answer is 1.25 seconds is a answer for this question. This is tau is equal to L by R. L by R is 2.5 by 2 here. This is not L equivalent. L equivalent is 2.5 and R is 2 ohms, okay. Next is this is based on the magnetic couple circuits. What is the Z 
in is looking from here p and q we know the direct formula for this here omega is given actually cannot written omega is equal to 5000 radian per second so how much z in is here is a is a magnetically coupled so this is not a transformer ideal transformer if you are ideal transformer zl dash is equal to zl by a square a is the transformation ratio but this is not a here a here is here magnetically coupled that's why you have to use this formula very simple way I am just using what is the formula is here if it is magnetically coupled I am just taking a one example ZL this is a magnetically coupled M this is L1 L2 how to find out Z in is here we already discussed in the class z in is equal to j x l 1 this impedance and plus refer to this side reflected impedance is directly you can use this omega m whole square by j x l 2 plus z l that is enough you get a z in so j x l 2 the value of this and z l is your load I will be taking it now, it apply here now. So, first you have to convert it to a impedances. This value is 125 milli henrys. JXL is equal to 125 milli into 5000. Milli 5000 get cancelled and 625 ohms. This value is J, 625 ohms. This value is here minus j by omega c minus j by omega is 5000 into 50 microfarad this value is becomes minus j 4 ohms and what about this this directly i am writing i am writing j 5 ohms milli and that get cancelled so what about this 5 milli henrys so first you have to find out what the z is here I am writing here for this here minus j4 here j5 here j625 what is z in ok z in is equal to j625 plus omega m whole square omega value is 5000 into m m is 5 milli whole square upon j xl2 that value is j5 and load load is j4 minus j4 so, 1000 get cancelled, Z in is equal to J625, J5 minus J4 is J1, Upar jane ke baad minus J, so this is minus J625, this value is how much? 0 ohms, simply this is 0 ohms, up to this is 0 ohms, 0 ohms means short circuited it behaves like a short circuited so now the circuit becomes simply 4 ohms 4 ohms 2 ohms this is replaced by short circuit 2 4 and 4 now what is z is 4 into 2 by 4 plus 2 parallel plus 4 the value is 16 by 3 ohms otherwise use a loop analysis i1 i2 so v by i ratio will give the z in ok thank you
dear students, gate 2024 electrical branch, reasoning aptitude, we got by memory based around 3 questions, but 2 questions dot are not subsumed properly. There is only one question we got exact data. So, that one question also belongs to ratio proportion, otherwise we can call as the indices depend upon a plus b whole square a minus b whole square. x dividing by y, a minus 1 dividing by a plus 1, x square minus y square ratio x square plus y square. What you are writing? x square minus y square dividing by x square plus y square. This I am writing x dividing by y whole square minus 1 x dividing by whole square plus 1. What they given x dividing by a minus 1 by a plus 1. Once you take in LCM a plus 1 cancellation. Numerator a minus whole square a plus whole square minus 4a. Denominator a minus whole square a plus whole square 2a square plus 2. We are getting minus 2a dividing by a square plus 1. This is the one question we got accurate data. One more question from Rambus, but data not subset. And one more question, cost price, selling price and profit, but data was not subset. So, once we are getting data, again we are going to see detailed solutions. So, after some time. Thank you for all. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Good evening, students. Yeah, it's the measurements part. I think measurements uh, so far we received 
data one is on one question is on power measurement another one ctpt students are saying but whatever the received the data on power measurement we try to solve right another question we did not receive okay <coughs> yeah so just let us see <coughs> right it's nothing but what they are asking they are given two watt meters <coughs> this is watt meter 1 another one watt meter 2 right so supply is 400 volts and phase sequence is ryb phase sequence is ryb what they are asking find the difference between the readings of two watt meters w1 and w2 this is w1 this is w2 <coughs> right so <coughs> anyway w1 if you are observing first given data you write it line voltage 400 volts supply phase sequence is ryb phase sequence is ryb <coughs> okay so anyway this is r this is y this is v if you are talking about watt meter 1 watt meter 1 pressure coil is connected between r and b so in general how is the watt meter reading vpc icc cos of angle between them vpc icc cos of angle between vpc and icc okay but where is the pressure coil connected first watt meter between r and b phases so vrb where is the current coil connected current coil current icc1 is connected in r phase i am writing icc1 or il1 cos of angle between vrb and icc1 <coughs> okay right anyway 4 and volt supply line voltage only okay fine <coughs> this icc current is entering here assume here the current flowing through ry load right i2 but what about this watt meter 2 watt meter 2 pressure coil is connected between y and b phases usually the pressure coil is highly resistive but have they given any data regarding pressure coil impedance or resistance not given usually pressure coil is highly resistive so that here no current is flowing through yb so when there is no current flowing through yb here current flowing through z2 load is i2 current flowing through rb load is or z1 load is i1 assume okay right so apply ksl at this point if you are applying ksl at this point il1 is nothing but icc1 is equal to i1 plus i2 okay <coughs> i1 plus i2 but what is i1 i1 is the current flowing through z1 load i1 is the current flowing through z1 load but z1 is connected across rb phase so can i write like this voltage across z1 load is vrb upon z1 but what is vrb i will draw the phasor diagram vrb <coughs> if i draw on the phasor diagram 400 volts at an angle of minus 60 degrees how minus 60 we got it i can explain right upon z1 z1 is 50 at an angle of 90 degrees okay how much 400 by 50 8 8 at an angle of here minus 60 <coughs> upon uh, this is minus 90 sorry please take care minus 90 degrees pretty mistake right so <coughs> minus 60 upon plus 9 plus 90 is nothing but 30 degrees this is the i1 current okay <coughs> but how vrb 400 just we can see here fine if i am drawing the phasor diagram this is vry taken as the reference okay A reference take it this is v yb this is VBR, right? VBR is how much? This is anyway minus 120. This will become minus 240. 
okay but what i want <coughs> vbr i want it right this is anyway reference you feel as reference this one right just extend this side what i want here vrb i want uh, if i am writing here this is nothing but minus vbr minus vbr is nothing but vrb only but you know very well this 120 degrees exactly divided so whenever 120 degrees is exactly divided or bisected what is this angle is nothing but minus 60 degrees understand or not so if vry is taken as reference and with respect to vry vrb is located at an angle of minus 60 degrees that is the reason i am writing directly 400 at an angle of minus 60 upon 50 at an angle of minus 90 is nothing but 8 at an angle of <coughs> plus 30 degrees fine clear now coming to i2 part <coughs> what is this i2 right so just look at i2 is equal to, uh, i2 equal to z2 current flowing through z2 load but z2 is connected across r and y supply directly r and y supply happy so whenever r and y supply v r y taken as reference only so i2 is equal to, i2 is equal to v r y upon z2 uh, what is V R Y? 400 at an angle of 0 upon Z2. Z2 is how much? 200 at an angle of minus 30 degrees. Uh, how much tell me this value? It's cancel. I think 2 at an angle of plus 30 degrees. No need to write plus anyway. Right, you got it I2 current. Fine. Yeah, you got it I2 current at the same time, you also got it I1 current. This I1 is nothing but ICC, ah, okay, ICC1 is here, I need to calculate, fine. Okay, <coughs> just you observe. Ah, now tell me, <coughs> ICC1, I want. ICC1 is equal to 8 at an angle of 30 degrees plus 2 at an angle of 30 degrees. Angles are remain same. I think shall I write directly 10 at an angle of 30 degrees. This is ICC1. Yeah, you got it ICC1. Now you can write it W1 is equal to VRB 400 volts. ICC1 10 cos of angle between them. What is VRB? Minus 60, already we written. Minus 60, minus of minus 30. How much? Cos 90, directly 0. I think first watt meter reading W1, 0. You got it as 0. Okay, is it clear? Right, now coming to <coughs> W2, second watt meter reading. So, how is it second watt meter reading? Pressure coil is connected between Y and B phases right directly <coughs> vyb right i2 current is nothing but icc2 directly we can write it it's good so w2 is equal to w2 is equal to vpc icc cos of angle between vpc and icc right but where it is connected connected between Y and B phases, so VYB, ICC, this ICC is nothing but directly can I write I2 current, I2, cos of angle between VYB and I2, okay. Ah, what is VYB? <coughs> VYB already you know, it is nothing but minus 120 degrees, 400. Okay, I2 is how much? 2 amperes, already you got it. I2 is nothing but 2 at an angle of 30 degrees. Cos of angle between them. VYB reference is minus 120. Right, I2 is how much? 30 degrees. So, minus 30. The angle between them only I am writing. Understand? I am writing simply the angle between them. Fine. So, now tell me 400. 
into 2 cos of minus 150 degrees. That will be the final answer. This is W2 is minus 692.8 watts. Ah, but what they are asking question? In the question they are asking difference between, find the difference between two watt meter readings. Right? So, difference is W1 minus W2. W1 minus W2. Yeah, is equal to 0 minus of minus 692.8 watts. This is your final answer. Okay. So, this is 2 marks question, right, as for the information given by students. Another question, CT students are saying, still we need to get the data. After getting the final data, right, given by gate people, then at that time we can see. Okay, right, thank you. So welcome everyone for the video solution of AMT subject, uh, branch is electrical. Now the question is three charges we have Q, Q and alpha Q are placed at minus one. So if you look at the question and if you look at the data, so I will not give you the detailed solution. Detailed solution you can see later on, this is X and let us say this is Y. So one charge is at minus one, say this charge is Q, another charge is at plus one and let us consider this is equal to Z equal to zero plane, correct? So this is your z is equal to 0 plane, right. Now, z equal to 0 plane because everywhere you can see that z coordinate is 0. So, minus 1. So, here is another charge, it is q and one more charge is there alpha q which is at 0 comma minus 1. So, 0 comma minus 1. So, this is your minus 1 and here the charge is alpha q. They are asking that what is the electric field at uh, 0 0.5, right. So, they are asking what is the electric field, fine. So, it is simple to calculate. Uh, the electric field, first electric field due to this, you can calculate it, right. So, this is the electric field due to alpha q, correct. This is the electric field due to the charge q, right. And this will be the electric field due to the charge q. Since these two charges are equal, right. So, you can see that there are two components for this. One component is in the x direction and one will be in the y direction. Similarly, so this is the component for this and similarly, we have a component for this. So, one will be horizontal component. This is your uh, x direction and this will be again in the y direction, right. So, therefore, these two fields are getting cancelled. So, what will be the E net? So, the E electric field net, it will be your two times of electric field due to Q charge plus electric field due to alpha Q, right. So, it is simple to calculate. You know the what is the, uh, where, what is the equation of the electric field? So, electric field is equal to KQ upon R square in the direction of AR, where K is equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught. So, when you solve it, right, so when you put the, all the values, so I am not giving the complete solution. Uh, so, you can take this angle as theta, right. So, this angle will become 90 minus theta, right. So, when you substitute the values of this uh, thing, you will finally get the value of alpha is equal to minus 3.6, right. So, this is the final answer. Now, the detailed solution you can see on the website. So, this was one question. Another question, the last one, uh, there is a magnetic field is given, they are asking what is the value of P, right. So, uh, we know that del dot B, it is equal to 0 if it is a magnetic field. So, del dot B equal to 0 or you can say that del dot H is also equal to 0. Now, they have used which coordinate system? They have used spherical coordinate system because this is R theta and phi. So, in spherical coordinate system, we have H1, H2, H3 is equal to 1 R and R of sin theta, right. 
So, when I substitute del dot h is equal to 0, so h vector you know, so when on substituting, so detailed solution you can see on the website, so on substitution or on substituting you will get the value of p, when you solve it you will get the value as 2, right. So, these were the two questions, simple question was there. So, I hope you have done your best and this is the complete video solution. So, all the best for your career, thank you.